comfort taste. We refuse to change. Sound like anybody you know? Coors, the banquet beer. In the NFL, the biggest games are decided by the smallest details. The Samsung imagined an LCD HD TV with 120 hertz, a true black screen, and twice the frames per second for exceptional motion clarity. We got it. Challenging. So you won't have to wait for further review to start the celebration. The decision is clear. Samsung, the official HD TV of the NFL. If you didn't watch NFL game day last Sunday night, here's what you missed. I got a feeling those starters are going to be in there for the entire game. They have balance offensively, defensively. Don't miss NFL game day, Sunday night at 11.30, only on NFL Network. The Houston Cougars running out onto the field at Reliance Stadium. And there's a good look at their record, 8-4 and four overall, 6-2 and two in Conference USA, second place in the West Division. But for the Cougars, a bit of a tumultuous month because they've had a coaching change since the end of November. And for more on that, we bring in the fourth member of our party, Kim Jones. Kim? Thank you, Brad. Yeah, let's talk about the coaches because we have quite a contrast on the sidelines tonight. For TCU, it's business as usual with Gary Patterson as head coach. For Houston, it's a different story. Art Bryles left the Cougars a month ago to become Baylor's head coach. He took his top two offensive assistants with him. Now Kevin Sumlin has been hired, but he's not here either. He's finishing up his work as Oklahoma's offensive coordinator in the Fiesta Bowl. That leaves interim head coach to Chris Thurman, the cornerbacks coach for the Cougars. There's a slew of Oklahoma, or excuse me, Houston assistance guys who don't know their coaching future beyond this game tonight. I just talked to Coach Thurman who told me this feels different, but it feels good. He's excited for this opportunity. And guys, I know you're looking forward to talking to Kevin Sumlin during our broadcast. Kim, we are. Thank you. And we'll we'll have Kevin Sumlin on the phone shortly. And there's a good look at the TCU sideline. Chris Thurman was asked if it was how, how do you how do you find your way in kind of leading these guys when nobody knows where they're going? And, and he looked at the questioner. He said, well, we're, we're coaches. That's what we do. And, you know, I grew up. I was the son of a coach. And you kind of understand that for college coaches and pro coaches, moving and change is part of the overall program. And you have to embrace change. And for this Houston team, Charles, the way I look at it, they had no control over it. The players are the ones that are left to deal with the damages. And how they deal with it really ultimately will go a long way to determining what happens tonight. You're exactly right. And what really happens for Houston is that they can down focus. They're out of school. You don't have to worry about that. You rely on each other. This is that time where that brotherhood comes into play. And you don't worry about it beyond the fact your coach is gone. Chris Thurman's leading us. Let's go play a bowl game. Now, Gary Patterson, on the other hand, has uh, a team that uh, he was hoping would be this year's Boise State. And, Mike, they have had a year that's been really, he says in many ways, it's the hardest year he's ever had as a coach. And I think they've done a great job dealing with the adversity and the injuries they've had this season. I mean, you start with the fact that the preseason Mountain West Conference Offensive Player of the Year, Aaron Brown, has been on and off the field for them out for this bowl game, out for the rest of the year after hurting a knee a few weeks ago. They've dealt with adversity this entire season. I think they might have done their best coaching job, Charles. Yeah, I agree with that, considering that they looked at themselves at 4-4 four and four and thought, what are we going to do for the holidays? But for TCU, you play in a bowl game. And they made that, they made that their number one focus. Forget the fact of being a BCS buster, that's gone. Let's get to a bowl game. And they won three out of their last four, and here they are. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, they, they were a team that had a, a scheduling quirk early in the year, and they thought they were going to have a long gap. After they played Texas, they beat Baylor. They lost to Texas. They thought they were going to have a bye, and they got stuck with a Thursday night game at Air Force, which they came from ahead to lose. Well, they were up 17-3, to and as Coach Patterson told us, they ran out of gas a little bit. Their field goal kicker misses a short field goal in overtime, and they lose a game they probably should have won. They dominated for three and a half quarters. So now they're both here, and uh, they're both here to have a great experience, and it's a big uh, game for these young men in the red because this is their backyard. And for the TCU Horned Frogs, it's a big recruiting trip. They got a lot of the players on this team 
by playing in what was then the Houston Bowl two years ago. There's a good look at Drew Combs, who kicks off TCU, won the toss, and uh, they've deferred. So Houston's got Donnie Avery back. Oh, boy, can he run. But he's not the guy with it. It's Allridge with it. And he can run. <laughs> That's pretty good starting field position for the Houston Cougars. A kickoff return by Aldridge. And it will bring us right to Chase Keenum. All freshman team in Conference USA for the Houston Cougars. A redshirt freshman from the Dallas suburb of Richardson. And what I like about him are two things. He's the son of a high school coach, so he's a gym rat, number one. And number two, he keeps plays alive with his feet. He's, he's got tremendous feet, athleticism, likes to run the football, both in the option game and in the pass game. The kickoff return was 32 yards. And the spread offense for Houston. And a quick gain to number nine, Perry McDaniel. Here's the offensive lineup for the Houston Cougars. Starting with the offensive line. Kim's going to talk about that left tackle. Sebastian Vollmer from Germany. Seabass. And Aykroyd, the right tackle. He's an all-conference USA player. And then there's Aldridge and Shoemaker, the tight end, uh, and fullback. Hafner at a tight end as well. And we've talked about Avery, and you'll hear about Harvey, number one. But right now you'll hear more about Aldridge. And, and Charles, one thing about this Houston offense that's different from some of the spread offenses you see around the country, they actually have packages with fullbacks and tight ends and short yardage running plays. Never mistake this offense for strictly a pass offense. They had back-to-back -back games this year where they ran the ball for over 300 yards. So a lot of people hear about them running it and spreading it out and throwing it. They will run the ball also often. And they'll run it to Ganaway, and apparently not enough for the first down. What they do on third and short is they go quick count with an unbalanced line. TCU was ready for it. They shifted their defensive lineman to the unbalanced side and stopped the play. Now look, it's fourth and short. Look at the quarterback up over the ball. This, this is a you got to be careful here. This is, this is Houston's M.O. Yep. They like to be aggressive, like to go for it on fourth down. Not a surprise. Allridge behind Keenum on fourth and one. And a terrific play in the flat to break up the little quick screen made by Chase Ortiz, the All-Mountain West Conference defensive end. Mike, I've got to ask this question. How do you not shot block Chase Ortiz on this play, knowing you're going to throw a quick pass the there? The right tackle, Aykroyd, who is an all-conference player, looked confused. He looked inside to his left. you got to chop his knees so his hands come down. That's a huge play by Ortiz and a bust by Aykroyd. And as we continue with tonight's starting lineups presented by Radio Shack, a good look at Andy Dalton from Katy, the Houston suburb. He's one of the ones who decided to come to TCU because he was able to see them here and in practice two years ago. And they start at their own 49. Well, no, they won't either. <laughs> Tight end jump. It's a bowl game. He's excited. <laughs> it's a big test officiating crew. Offense. Number 86, five yards. The down remains first. Shea Reagan, the tight end, was the player in motion, and the referee, David Whitboat. Another offensive coordinator. there. Mike Schultz said he wanted to get the tight end more involved in the offense. <laughs> I don't think that was the way he had in mind. He was involved. Shane said, I'm going to be involved. It's first and 15. Look out. Dalton just barely got rid of that and a gain on the play of 10 yards and now the defense of the offense of TCU presented by Radio Shack and Newhouse, Lindner, Schluter, Montgomery and Richmond up front. Schluter's probably the best player there. Turner, the tailback, we saw Shea Reagan kind of gets the other tight end. Bryant, the other wide receiver, so it's second down and about four. Christian. Not an ecumenical remark. It's Ryan Christian, the tailback, and now the defense of Houston. And again, tonight's starting lineups presented by Radio Shack. And the Houston Cougars will bring out Pre actually playing on the nose with Stewart and uh, Philip Hunt. Miller, 
Lubajowski, Allen, and Pahulu, and Pahulu will rush the passer. Williams and Simon on the corners. Fontenet, an all-conference player at strong safety. And this is the tailback, Joseph Turner, for a couple. Turner took over for Aaron Brown, who was the starting tailback and a preseason All-Mountain West projection. He was injured in the first game, struggled through for a while, and then suffered another injury, and they really missed him. So a nice run by Turner on second down sets him up with third and makeable. The runs that we're seeing early from TCU are not exotic, super, you know, hipper dipper type plays they're your basic runs but they're coming from so many different sets and formations every snap is a different personnel grouping going into the game for tcu they're giving you different formations different looks they're trying to out leverage houston and getting them moving in one direction and hit them coming back the other way and that's what turner is he's a one cut runner at 225 pounds third and three first down and more for Jeremy Curley, but there's a marker. And that was kind of like stealing on third and short. He was the inside receiver of trips, just ran a quick out. You've got to get up and press that defensively. You also have to keep people from getting down the field before they're supposed to. And that was the penalty that was called, an ineligible man downfield. So the first down run on the reception by Curley is negated. And, and, that, and that's something that you rarely see on that type on of that a pass play, play, right? I mean, normally what you're seeing an ineligible man, a screen or a scramble, or a scramble where guys move around and guys lose sight of where they are. On a quick, quick step, quick three step drop. How does someone get downfield? That's, that's bad. So now it'll be third down and eight. Nobody in the middle of the field for Houston. Now they're going too deep. And the quarterback, Andy Dalton, may have gotten closer to field goal range. Now the Cougars thought the ball came out. And, and that's really close. That could be reviewable. I thought, I thought they were, I, I thought the referee had his arm going in the opposite direction. Okay, he just had an arm up. But look at the coverage downfield, Mike. That looked like you called too deep, and I'm exactly with you. It looked like too deep, five I, man under. I think and he they fumbled, were all over. He might have fumbled the football, and I have a feeling we're going to get a review from up top. Now, remember, in college football, it's not typically you get one call from the sideline from the coach. Everything's reviewable up, up top. Fontenet, number 28, made a great hit on the football. I'm betting. If I'm TCU, I'm getting to the line and get it moving now. Even on fourth down, it looks like they're going to go for it. It might be a short punt. Short punt. Yeah. yeah, they got by. Oh, no, somebody moved. Yeah, that was a quick pick formation with Dalton who could pooch it. Now they're just going to go regular punt with a five-yard penalty on the yep. See yep. If, he, if he says that Shea Reagan, the tight end, was in motion again. False start. 86 offense. Uh, Five yards. That's two for Reagan. Remains. You know, since that call did not get changed, all right, it, it would appear to be a fumble, and I'm not 100%, but it appeared to be a fumble. Field position changes for Houston now. Instead of having the ball out here near midfield, chances are the ball will be inside the 20-yard line when they take over. Derek Wash is going to punt it away, and obviously he's going to try to keep it in the field to play. Voted, voted their special teams MVP. didn't get it close was a pretty good punt but into the end zone 37 yards and a touchback it's nothing nothing in the first quarter and Houston's gonna have it for the second time when we come back 
Every year about this time, something magical happens. The red tags come out for the Buick Pontiac GMC Red Tag Event. Look for the red tag and your chance to get the best price of the season on 2008 Buick Pontiac and GMC models. And the price on that tag is the price you pay. During the red tag event, choose 2,000 total cash back or 1.9 APR financing for 60 months on 2008 GMC Sierra Crew Cab. Hurry, the red tag event ends January 2nd. See your Buick Pontiac GMC dealer today. way to follow your favorite team on the road at the best prices guaranteed go with Expedia the official travel sponsor of the NFL Expedia.com Expedia is sending 20 fans to Super Bowl 42 and 20 fans to the 2008 NFL Pro Bowl and two lucky fans will go to both register for your chance to win at ExpediaWinningTeam.com Headsets. Find all the stuff you need for all the stuff you got at your neighborhood Radio Shack. Do stuff. The Texas Bowl on NFL Network is brought to you by Radio Shack, where this holiday season you don't just buy stuff, you do stuff. Expedia, now the official travel sponsor of the NFL. Expedia, go with confidence. Houston's going to have the ball at the 20, but uh, they might have had it at the 32 had this fumble or not been reviewed. It looks like Phillip Hunt, number 53, gets in and punches it right there, strips it. The ball's out before Fontenot even made the hit. It's recovered by Fontenot. Now that ball should have been ruled fumble right there as opposed to a punt and then the 20-yard line. So Charles... Your point, it was a great one, field position. H hidden yardage. You know, right now, starting at 20, yep. happy to have it, but boy, could have been up there a little bit farther. And they really got Allridge boxed in. A great job done first by Chase Ortiz. Great call. He isn't going to get credit for the tackle. He won't even get credit for the assist. Watch Chase Ortiz right here, okay? Ortiz is the guy that forces the cut right there forces the cut out wide now where's your help here comes brian bonner great job by ortiz forcing the bounce outside to your secondary tackle being able to spill plays to the proper places is a big part of playing defense you may not make the tackle as you pointed out mike but you cause your overall defense to be better second and ten Keenum very calm in the pocket, but the outstanding pursuit by Bonner to run down Perry McDaniel before he could get more than a couple of yards. McDaniel's their underneath the guy. He runs a lot of crosses, runs a lot of whip routes, not a real fast guy, quicker than fast. Bonner all over him in man coverage, but a very accurate pass by Keenum. And now third down and seven. Mike, when we get a chance, I want you to talk him some more about Bonner because I got a feeling you're going to be looking at him later on as, as well as he runs, especially as a pump return at the next level. Always just split out wide to the right. Tatum's got a first down. Let me tell you, his poise, watch his feet back there in the pocket. He is not excited when nothing's happening for him right away. And part of what helps is this part of the field is open for him. You know why? Because they went five wide receivers, no one in the backfield, so it forced the defense to spread out and adjust. You didn't have anyone who could stay in the middle of the field and quote-unquote spy on Case Keenum. He became the unaccounted for runner, and he ran for a first down. And he's quicker than that defensive tackle trying to chase him down. Corey Grant forces Robert Henson to make the play down the field. 12-yard run for Keenum. First down at the 35. This is Kahn just into the game. Andre Kahn, a redshirt freshman from Jacksonville, Florida, number six. 39 is Jason Phillips, the leading tackler for TCU. There he is. Phillips a tough kid. Remember, they're a 4-2-5 alignment. He's one of the inside linebackers along with David Hawthorne. Tough kid, leading tackler, All-Mountain West Conference second team. Had 77 tackles and an interception. 
Scoreless nearing the middle of the first quarter. Second down. Five and a half for Houston. Ulrich breaking a tackle. But Charles, they're finding him. They are swarming to 22. Obviously part of your game plan. You can't look at Houston's numbers and not see 2 and 22 dominating them. Run game, pass game, doesn't matter. So what are you going to align your defense to do? Stop those guys. Every defense wants to take away the best things an offense can do. We're going to keep an eye on 2 and 22 in a big way. Raphael Priest alone at the top of your screen on Donnie Avery. There's a lot of speed out there. Houston Brad connects on 48% of third downs, which is ridiculous, and this is why it's only third and three. Keenum keeping on the option, and he's got another first down. Hawthorne with the tackle. And that's the play Gary Patterson was most concerned with option. They do it different, a lot of different ways at Houston. This is just down the line option. He's attacking the end. Great cut, makes the play inside. Mark, Matt Panfill can't get off the block in time. Cuts inside Bonner, first down. And Charles, the added dimension of athleticism at the quarterback position. Exactly right. And that was a great block at the point of attack against Panfield by number 87, Mark Hafner. He controlled Panfield on that play, allowed Keenum to get to the corner. First and 10. The Cougars have moved the ball from their 20. And there is a draw off a fake quick screen. And now the defensive starting lineup for TCU presented by Radio Shack and it starts as Mike told you earlier with Ortiz and Blake at the end. Griffin a freshman pressed into duty at the beginning of the season. Phillips flanked by Hawthorne. Sanders Priest Roach and Hodge. Roach is the guy to remember he's all conference and when they moved him to their free safety position in the middle of the year their whole secondary seemed to align. Second and nine. And Keenum just barely got rid of that football in time. He still, <laughs> still absorbed the big hit, though, he from he David Hawthorne. He stayed in bounds to try and deliver the pass. And Hawthorne says, as long as you're in bounds, I can, I can tag you. Absolutely. And that's exactly what he does. Atypical of a, of, of a coach's son here, either get out of bounds or get, or rid, of it get rid of the ball. But you're in between there, you're going to get the hit. It doesn't matter who you're cheering for or if you're for neither team. When you see a young man holding the ball like that, in your head you're saying, get rid of it, get rid of it, get rid of it. Exactly right. Now it's third and long. TCU goes to an odd man front, a three man front, and they bring heavy blitz packages with zone schemes behind. And Keenum flushed out and still going. <laughs> and there's a, there's a uh, former coach. Now running the operation in Miami who would call that an indiscriminate <laughs> throw and there was a flag at the end of the play right back there around Keenum. See they're discussing now I believe a grounding call. I'm not sure the ball got past the, the line, line of scrimmage. scrimmage. He Even was outside the pocket. Exactly. I don't know. I thought it. Well we that's what they're discussing it again. I thought yeah. it. The ball did not cross the line of scrimmage in the attempt to dump the ball. Intentionally grounding the ball. Number seven. Loss of down. It's a costly penalty because of the loss of down now. Mike, you called this, though. You said three-man front. They bring their blitz package with zone behind. They brought two right. and actually brought a third guy late. And the third guy, Phillips, is the guy who got the hit on Keenum and forced the incomplete pass. So your scouting report was dead on. <laughs> three-man front, two guys came, and then Phillips became the third guy when his guy didn't go out for a pass. Well, Chase Turner is going to punt it away to Brian Bonner. Bonner can make it exciting. Oh, oh, running into. There's the flag. The player to make the reception. Bonner will make it exciting anyway. Look at this. Watch this here. Look at this. I'm going to run some more. Maybe we'll decline that penalty. I think that's <laughs> declined. <laughs> Tim Monroe looked like the player who ran into Bonner. You know what happens though, and I've been on punt teams, and what happens is when the contact occurs and you know as a coverage guy that there's a flag, you hesitate. You think the play's over. Brian Bonner Gets did a great job. Interference on the kicking team. The penalty is declined. First down. 
29-yard return by Bonner has set TCU up in a nothing-nothing game, but good starting field position for the Horn Frogs. It has a six-liter, 48-valve V12 engine with 510 horsepower, electronic active roll suspension, custom leather seats with six levels of massage, a voice command navigation system, and it all means nothing, unless you have the right tires. For drivers who want to get the most out of their cars, it's Bridgestone or nothing. There are 380,000 NCAA student athletes, and most of us and most will, of us go, will pro. go pro in something, something other than, other sports. than sports. In something other than sports. Go to ncaa.student.org to find out how. Get NFL Mobile only from Sprint on the all-new Motorola Razor 2. Sharper than ever. Hello, Moto. Saturday night, Tom Brady and the undefeated Patriots put perfection on the line against the playoff hungry Giants. It's one for the record books. Patriots, Giants, Saturday night at 8, live on NFL Network. Log on to IWantNFLNetwork.com to find out how to get the only television network dedicated to the NFL 24-7, 365. IWantNFLNetwork.com. NFL Network, your home for football 24-7. That's how long Mike Mayock is actually in the studio, by the way, 24-7. <laughs> During draft time. So TCU set up by the 29-yard punt return by Bonner. Starts at the Houston 45. Dalton with a lot of time. Right, right tackle held. Yeah, he sure did. So this is coming back. This would have been down to the one yard line for Justin Watts. But the right tackle, Nick Richmond, couldn't hold his block and instead he held the blocker or the tackler. And it was a 44 yard play off the board. Yeah, that was an easy call right in front of the ref. Clearly a hold. And uncharacteristically for a Coach Patterson team. Offense, number 79. Ten yards, previous spot. Repeat the down. TCU has imploded in two series. They've got four penalties already. They average. And there it is right there. There's the hold by Richmond. That's on their rush linebacker, Brendan Pahulu. They, they only average six penalties a game. Four in the first two drives. Well, maybe they're just getting them out of the way around. There you go. There's an optimist. <laughs> Well, he's calling Sonny. <laughs> Dalton to keep on first and 20. Nice block by Reagan, the tight end, to get him to three. Interesting play there. That's a quarterback run with the left tackle. Marshall Newhouse actually trapping, and he's going to read the trap block. Watch Newhouse. Here he comes. He pulls up into the hole. Nice block. Dalton makes the read, gets outside. They give you a little bit of everything. They give you option, they give you spread, they give you a little bit of eye formation, and they force you, Charles, to defend just about every kind of offense there is. Now it's second down and 16. And a screen to Christian. Good job of staying inbounds to the 42 and set up third and eight. Charles, that's really what that play's designed to do. Second and about 15, and we get half of it back, so you've got a makeable third down situation. Your coaches talk about that all the time, managing the game, staying, staying ahead of the chains, or if you're behind them, not too much. Because for TCU, Andy Dalton is a freshman All-American, but they don't want to put the game on his shoulders. They want it to be a manageable, makeable type down and distance. That's exactly what that screen did. Third down and six. And not 
much for Turner in that Houston defense, which doesn't get talked about very often. Really swarming to the ball. It's another fourth down. Ernest Miller, number five, the drop defensive end, formerly a strong safety, still plays that way, filled the hole well. Turner, the running back, still down as he had a good look at Miller. And Turner got an awfully good look at Miller. And underneath that, there's, there's a from the back peak at Joseph Turner from Austin, Texas. They have been snake bit at that position. Well, they're going to uh, take some time and look at Turner. Nothing, nothing under five minutes remaining in the first quarter in Houston. I mean, sure. I help people save money on car insurance, but few folks know that I support wildlife conservation, too. You're going to eat all those. Well, you are, aren't you? You're just going to go to town. All right, well, I'll make this quick. I'm teaming up with the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. I'm going to be making the rounds to get the word out. Are those clams? I love clams. Do you uh, want to offer me any? Uh, apparently not. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. The Inside Bowl on NFL Network. The electric Cowboys offense looks to heat up the desert when they square off with the Hoosiers. The Inside Bowl, Monday at 6 on NFL Network. Expensive brokers are shaking because E-Trade just introduced their completely re-engineered market trader. It's easy. It's extraordinary. It's E-Trade. Have a structured settlement or annuity? J.G. Wentworth says it's your money. Use it when you need it. He's right. It's my money and I need it now. It's my money and I need it now. It's my money and I need it now. It's, it's my, my money, money and I need it now. Need it now. If you have a structured settlement and need cash now, call J.G. Wentworth for a free appraisal. There's no obligation. It's your money. Use it when you need it. Call 866-447-0873. The air conditioner and the lawnmower. Both are ideas from the minds of African Americans. Support the United Negro College Fund because a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Bell Network presents Saturday Night Football, and it's your place to see New England in prime time. The Patriots invade the Big Apple to close out the regular season with the Giants in an interconference battle. The run to the playoffs is on. NFL Network, your home for football 24-7, all year long. Saturday Night Football, Patriots, Giants. Welcome back to the Texas Bowl, presented by Radio Shack. Mike, why did they run that option on third and six? Well, it's third and six, I think, for two reasons. Number one, they're trying to take a lot of the management of the game out of Andy Dalton's hands, as far as making decisions down the field vertically early. And number two, they're hoping to get him in man coverage. And if they get those guys running away from the line of scrimmage, maybe they can gash one. So Wash is going to punt it away. McDaniel is deep. The last one went in the end zone for a touchback. This one's high enough. Find it. They couldn't find it. Wow. Oh, they had a man down they there, Curtis it. Clay, number seven. The block by the player from Houston made that play and let it go in the end zone. If he doesn't block it, he's down there to catch it and down it inside the two. Cougars at the 20 when we come back. Isn't there a faster way you can do this? No. Things faster means waiting less. And with Sprint, you'll wait less to make calls with unlimited calling starting at 7 p.m. instead of 9. For more ways to wait less, go to waitless.org. Now get the Motorazor V3M for only $49.99 from Sprint. What'd you get? The jalapeno cheddar double melt from Wendy's. It's got jalapenos, bacon, and two kinds of cheese melted between two hot, juicy burgers. Oh, yeah? This air supply burger is pretty outstanding. Making love out of nothing at all. Making Dressing up a boring burger is just wrong. Nothing. Enjoying the flavor explosion of the jalapeno cheddar double melt from Wendy's? That's right. Order a medium or large combo and get a free download of the music you really want from Rhapsody. Tools have evolved. The new lithium Ryobi 
OnePlus tools work at full power twice as long with a battery that fits all your other OnePlus tools. Ryobi OnePlus. Pro features, affordable prices. You'll find them only at the Home Depot. Where it begins. Break down the game before the game. Join Rich, Mooch, Marshall, and Dion before Saturday Night Football. Total Access on Location. Presented by Sears. Only on NFL Network. Hi, I'm Bill Belichick, and you're watching the NFL Network. Well, the question football fans everywhere are, is, are asking, will the Patriots be perfect? And tomorrow night, NFL Network presents the Patriots and the Giants in a season-ending matchup. Patriots-Giants live on NFL Network tomorrow night at 8 Eastern. I don't know if they're going to be perfect. But they're going to play their guys. Well, they are. No resting people, I'll guarantee that. But I also hear the Giants are a little tired about hearing about the Patriots. It could be interesting. The Cougars again after a touchback. Keenum's still got it. And now the Cougars have a first down, and that's Avery. We'll go down to Kimberly Jones on the sideline. Thank you, Brad. I went looking for a Houston scouting report, and I talked to Kevin Cobb, the rookie quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles, who, of course, led these Cougars last season. He told me about Anthony Aldridge. He reminds him of Brian Westbrook, his ability to slash and cut back. Gary Patterson's got to be very happy with the way his defense is swarming to Aldridge at this point. Of Donnie Avery, he said no one's better when the ball's in the air. Just throw it, and he'll go get it. And as for Case Keenan, his successor, he said you know he's a coach's son. He's smart, great great instincts and he always makes the big play. Kim, thank you. Sounds like a scouting report from the quarterback. Nice cut, yeah, wasn't it? Great ball fake there by Keenum. That's a pretty thorough scouting report Kim got, wasn't it? No kidding. I mean, she got she got the whole thing and detailed and I love it. Love well, the she, work. She was smart enough to go talk to a quarterback. Went, went right to the guy. Remember Kevin Cobb wasn't just last year. A four-year starter took every snap of almost 48 for Houston consecutive for four. starts. How about that? Yeah. I mean, you talk about durability, toughness, as well as terrific play. I thought it was an interesting comparison, Allridge to Westbrook. Now, they're different body types. Westbrook's put together a little bit bigger, but 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 I think the point is the same. Returning kicks, scat back, catch the ball, good point. Second and four, Allridge will get one. Tommy Blake. 97 at the bottom of the stack. I think TCU's front four is doing a great job controlling the run game so far. And the thing you've got to do against an offense that goes laterally, a sideways offense, you've got to press the line of scrimmage. Because when you start running laterally, you create gashes and seams, and that's when a guy like Orange can beat you. So you've got to be disciplined, and your linebackers have to press the line of scrimmage. Orange five carries, five yards. This is third down and three. So far, this has been option or a choice route to the number two receiver in the slot. Option. Whoops. That one got away from Allridge. A loss back to the 35. And we'll see Chase Turner, the Houston punter. Guys, it appeared to me that the ratio, that the gap between quarterback and pitch man, was off that distance bit, was right? off. Yeah, I agree. Right? Did yep. you think so? Yeah, I thought, I thought Aldridge that Aldridge had not run the curve exactly. fast enough to be where they thought he would be. So when the pitch came, he was probably a step behind where he normally was, on the, where he normally would be on that play. And I like the chunky kickers we have in this game. <laughs> <laughs> How many times do you see chunks like that? Hey, it's like pitchers, right? You don't run the ball down. Woo! Yeah. Look at this. This is why he's chunky. He's got all of that to put into it, and, and he's going to get a touchback, and that's a shame. He deserved better. The ball went 65 yards, but TCU will have it at the 20. Let's hear it for chunky kickers. <laughs> Applause at the 20 when we come back. Do you know that Coors Light tastes as cold as the Rockies? You must think I'm dumb. No, Coach, I, Coach no, it's it's just that some people don't know the Rockies are cold. Uh, would, would they be someone that you would think would know anything? No. Hey, Coach, you ever consider changing your nickname from Big Tuna to Big Coors Light? This conversation's going nowhere, okay? Okay. Ross Brewed Coors Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL. Coach, our girlfriends think we talk too much about football and Coors Light. But that's a good thing, not a bad thing. Reach into the choir. Hey guys, they were out of Snickers. No! But um, 
I got these Snickers dark bars with dark chocolate instead. So. Yay! Stay tight in the pocket. Be on time. Is he blitzing? Three seconds until sack. Work your eyes to the left. Stare down that safety. Get off the mic. What's the corner doing? Little FC or Two seconds until this. sack. We need this one. Looking for Harrison. Harrison's completely covered. One second until sack. Who's breaking free? Who's breaking hot? Who's more hot? Clark. As soon as Manning thinks it, then you see it. Watch exclusive coverage of live game moments with NFL Mobile. This is the NFL at Sprint Speed. Welcome back to the Texas Bowl presented by Radio Shack Houston by Twilight. Beautiful skyline in Texas most populous city. And speaking of populations there was an overpopulation of the TCU huddle. We'll see about <laughs> seeing that in a minute. Frogs their worst starting field position. Dalton. Uh, it just got worse. You got to throw that ball don't you at some point. Brandon Brinkley took away the screen, right, Charles? He, he, he jumped on it, and he's the guy that it's almost populated like, the Almost like he knew what play was coming. <laughs> he's the guy. Watch 21 right here. Num number 21. See, he takes away the screen, and Andy Dalton has nowhere else to go and sets things up for Ernest Miller, number five. The drop defensive end is playing very well thus far. He had nothing after the screen. And he was still in the pocket. So he couldn't just sail it out of bounds. Exactly. It's second and 24. Great ground. Yeah, it sure was. And Dalton was able to find Walter Bryant, Jr. from San Angelo. I love the route because it was a one receiver route to that side. It looked like he was running a vertical. He got the defender's hips turned and then they threw the comeback. It was really well done. He's also well blocked up front to give Dalton enough time on the play fake to be able to throw because it's a longer route with the breaking that you have to do. And that drives a defensive coordinator crazy. You make a great play on defense, you force loss of yardage, right. and they come back and get a big chunk on the next play. Third and two for Dalton. Blitz. Oh. I'm not sure he could have thrown it much better on first blush. Jimmy Young, the intended receiver. The blitz adjustment. He, he knew he had one-on-one -on, -one on the edge, and Charles, I'm with you. There's the blitzer, the unblocked blitzer. There's the ball to the outside shoulder. I don't think Go he adjusted it. correctly. He, did, he, did. he kept running toward the sideline instead of adjusting to the football. See, at that point, he has to bend back one step to the, to the, to the middle of the field, and he makes the catch. It was a perfectly thrown ball by Dalton. Jimmy Young didn't make the adjustment. And that's, that's a mark of a young receiver. Redshirt freshman, he'll, he'll improve that as time goes on. So Derek Wash will punt it away to McDaniel. This is the hang time he wanted on the other two punts. And McDaniel with a fair catch at the 35-yard line. So the uh, TCU defense now, after a 37-yard punt, the TCU defense has to come out and face all this explosion. And yeah, we really expected, obviously, for Houston to try and get vertical, but so far it's been Case Keenan's legs scrambling their only offense. He's taken an awful lot of shots. The TCU front four has dominated the game. Big hit there, throws the ball away, gets a penalty, and then, as Charles identified, the ratio was wrong between the quarterback and the pitchman, and it's a fumble out of bounds. Houston has turned the ball over on downs once and punted twice. And here's Allridge. Boy, he is a popular fella. He is drawn a crowd. Mike, you identified how TCU is playing well versus the run in this game. One of the reasons I think they're playing so well is their philosophy of rotating defensive linemen. Gary Patterson has the philosophy, hey, no more than 45 snaps or so for my guys. I want them healthy. I want them fresh in the fourth quarter to go after the passer. Ortiz or, and Blake, neither one of them's on the field at this point. Well, they play eight, nine guys, and remember, now it's second and 12. We're going to get that odd front, odd front zone blitz package. Three men down. Now they're dropping out. They're going to play coverage here. Eight dropping. Came up. <laughs> that was Ortiz giving. There it oh, is. he's got a man. Seven yards for the 
first score of this year's Texas Bowl. We've talked from the very beginning about the athleticism of the quarterback. That time they choose to play coverage. Rush three, drop eight. What did he do? Charles, he bought time. Nothing to watch him move around in the pocket. I love the patience, the lack of panic. Okay, I can run away from that defensive end. Come back the other way. You've got a corner that loses leverage. And you can see right there, number 20, Nick Sanders. He's got deep outside. And in the, in the situation with the scramble, he lets somebody get behind him. Lawrence adds the extra point to make it 7-0. And Mike, we talked earlier about the fact that the first couple of possessions, when you watch Keenum, his feet are so calm. And what you just said, a great example of that. The lack of panic is what I like in a young player right there. He knows they're only, his pre-snap read told him there are only three guys coming, Charles, and he took advantage of it. And I had said that Ortiz was out of the game. He was in the game. Yep. So when he reversed field the first time and came back the opposite way and, and bypassed the defensive end, that wasn't just any defensive end. That was Chase Ortiz that he moved away from. And then Khan got, got, got free downfield because of the reverse of field by Keenum in the pocket. They lost sight of the receivers, and he snuck in behind them. And, Charles, here's a good look at it. As a defensive back, which you and I so both were, look at 20 right you there. See where his Sanders, eyes are? Look where, where it is. His eyes. In the backfield. Wrong He's spot. Got you. Yeah. Man. Now, the thing about Andre Khan, he's enlisted as a running back, and that's what he plays for Houston. But he came to Houston as a wide, wide receiver. Yep. Yep. So he has those types of skills to get downfield. The case Keenum, wow. I understand now why his teammates have nicknamed him Sweet Bee. All right, there's a reason. He has earned that moniker. He's got a couple nicknames. Donnie Avery called him a white Michael Vick. <laughs> But right now, I think he'd rather go with I think Sweet Pea's a little safer. Okay. Lawrence kicking it away. And this is Marcus Brock. He just could not get through the wedge, but he got it out to the 25 as we have only two seconds remaining in the first quarter. 65 yards in two plays in 57 seconds for the Houston Cougars. And, and Charles, the point I wanted to make, you and I were both D-backs. And when you're playing zone like that, what's the first rule? Deeper than the deeper deepest. Deeper than deepest receiver. And, and he was so close to two receivers. And then what Houston did a great job with is what they call their scramble rules. You've got specific rules when a quarterback scrambles to your side of the field. One guy breaks to the sideline, another guy goes deep. That defensive back has got to be deep within the deep. Christian, the running back, as the first quarter comes to an end. Easy, boys, easy. It's a bowl game. Easy, <laughs> easy. Everyone gets gifts. Still, still the holidays. 7-0 Houston, and we will be back to the Texas Bowl, brought to you by Radio Shack. NFL game day. This is a bad boy. This is just good football weather. We're not finished yet. NFL game day, Sunday night at 11:30 on NFL Network. Well, the New England Patriots go for a perfect season live on NFL Network. What started as a dream is now on the threshold of reality. The genius coach, the golden boy quarterback, poised to lay claim as the greatest football team ever. Yeah, pretty much. Man, I hope the Giants win. If you're already a dynasty, what comes after that? The perfect season is on the line. Patriots-Giants, Saturday at 8 on NFL Network. All right, the play is 60 stretch, Farla. <sighs> 60 stretch, Farla. <sighs> Come on, let's go, let's go. 60 stretch, Farla. <sighs> I won, ready? Hey, you need this. I'll take those. Wake up, people! New Diet Pepsi Max with ginseng and more caffeine. This is no reality show. This isn't acting. This is the absolute genuine article. This is going to change the way fans see the game. This is business. This is pleasure. This is Braylon. This is Bratwurst. And Bryant, this is what the Colts do best. This is focused. This is flawless. This is football.
welcome back to the Texas Bowl, presented by Radio Shack. Reliance Stadium in Houston, Brad Sham, Charles Davis, Mike Mayock, Kimberly Jones, 7 nothing Houston. And Dalton for TCU with an open tight end. Easy to Shea Reagan from Idaloo up in the Texas Panhandle. Brought down by the All-Conference USA Safety, Kenneth Fontenet. And that's just a good, smart first down play there. Again, zone. They had Bart Johnson running the outside right route. Reagan on the inside. He sat down between the two linebackers, and it was read correctly by Dalton. And that's what he does. About 80% of his catches go for first downs. High formation for the first time for TCU. Double move, stutter go, flag. Triple move. <laughs> stutter go, flag. Stutter go, flag. Mark Triple move. Marcus Brock was the intended receiver, and Brinkley was the man who was flagged. Brinkley's not as good when he doesn't know the play ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> but he, oh, he can't get the huddle. Appearance. Defense, number 21. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Maybe it's this end of the field that draws the penalty. Maybe that's what it is. Good move. Here's the stutter go. Brinkley just reaches out and grabs him. There couldn't be any more obvious than that one. Come go, back here. Go back to the touchdown pass. One of the things we said was... The defensive back, Nick Sanders, looked back in the backfield. That's exactly what happened there to Brinkley. When he came up and drove on the stutter step, he took his eyes back into the backfield instead of to the receiver. And then when he made the move past him, all he could do was grab it. First and ten. And nice little belly play for Justin Watts, who has replaced the shaken up Joseph Turner at running back. And to the fact that TCU has had some injury problems at tailback going back to losing Aaron Brown before the year and now we are told that Turner has a knee injury and he won't play anymore tonight. What is it about the tailback position for TCU guys? They've had it tough all year long. Aaron Brown is a preseason Mountain West Conference Offensive Player of the Year. He stayed dinged all year. Now Christian, oh what a move in the open field. It's such a good move. It's Dalton who's got the ball. That's why it was such a good move. <laughs> Take out the play-by-play -play guy. That's a great job by Dalton that time. And remember, this is the read. This was when Turner was injured earlier. That's, boy, what a shame. It is a shame. Guys coming off of 226 yards and four touchdowns on the ground against San Diego State in his last ball game. It, uh, it hadn't been the same since LaDainian Tomlinson left. Just a, it's a read. Remember, it's the option. There's no pitch, man, but it's still an option. He reads the defender, comes right down on the ball back, and he goes outside. Now Dalton's still got it again. There's a terrific <laughs> open field tackle at the 25-yard line by Rocky Schwartz. How about that young man? Rocky Schwartz, number 20. What, and by the way, what a great name. It's, it's a perfect name for, a, for the way he plays. A hard-hitting, aggressive safety. Had 114 tackles in 2005. Hurt a knee early last season, sat out the rest of the year. Makes his way back this year, and in the season opener, 13 tackles to announce his presence with authority. Second and eight. Christian picked up the blitz very nicely. And gave Dalton time to get it down to the 20 to Curley. And then Brinkley with... A good tackle to force TCU into a third and short. The uh, offensive guys call that a run route. I call it an it's illegal a pick. pick. A pick, it's a yeah. Pick. <laughs> but they have DBs up here. <laughs> Two wide receivers run vertically. The third wide receiver comes underneath. You catch the defenders up in the wash. Easy throw and catch. 0 for 3 on third down until Christian hip fakes his way inside the 15. And TCU is going to be first down in the red zone. And Ryan Christian's an interesting guy, number 18. Former wide receiver. They had to move him back to tailback because of the injuries. And what he's developed into is a guy that's given him more versatility on offense. They'll actually go empty set with him as trip receiver and motion him back to the backfield. He's become very important in this attack. Christian again. Boy Rocky again cleaned up inside, Brad. That time that Christian was found by some lions right there. <laughs> That's the old counter tray. They used the offset fullback 
the trap block on the counter tray, but Rocky scores with an eight-man front. Watch from the left side. You see number 47 there, William Jackson, the fullback. Rocky Schwartz from the inside out. Textbook tackle at the line of scrimmage. We'll give some credit to Trent Allen, number 41, who stepped up into the hole and spilled the play back inside for Schwartz to clean up. Second and 11. Christian to the nine. Fumble. Looked like they even fumbled it forward and picked up a couple yards of the balance. Seems to me that Brian Christian does not run like a wide receiver. He tries to run hard in the hole, but Rocky Schwartz with a big hit. How did he come up with it? And then good knock the ball. Look at him. Christian gets it. Well, one of the things was Rocky Schwartz got up and celebrated the hit a little bit. Right, I didn't notice right. the ball was on the ground. Yeah, but if Rubidowski helped him also. And Rocky hits him like that one more time, Christian's, <laughs> Christian's going to take a breather. Third down and four. Okay. On the blitz. Looks like a first down and goal. Jeremy Curley. That was a big play for TCU. Wasn't this the same play they ran where they had a guy a, a, a alignment downfield earlier in the game? Yep. And Two receivers clear. Come underneath with Curley. And Fontenot does a pretty good job, but not good enough. First down, TCU. You're asking a lot right there, Fontenot, the, the defensive back on a, you know, two or three yard play to right. be able to be that close and make it and stop him from the first down. Look at that, they come out with big people and then all of a sudden spread the field. That's the fullback at the bottom of your screen and this is a quarterback keep for Dalton. That's a nice play design. Love the design. They come out with big people, which makes Houston think it's going to be a tight, compacted set. They come out that way, all of a sudden open it up and still run the same play they were going to run anyway, the zone read. The TCU kicker is Chris Manfredini. And he ties the game. Thanks to back-to-back -back runs by the redshirt freshman from the Houston suburb of Katy, Andy Dalton. Nice move, Red. 7-7. Seven, seven. Going over and over? It's not just you. Stopping and starting? Going urgently? You're not alone. Lots of guys experience male urinary symptoms due to BPH, also known as an enlarged prostate. But for many guys, prescription Flomax may relieve urinary symptoms due to BPH in one week. And who doesn't want to spend less time in the bathroom? Only your doctor can tell if you have BPH, not prostate cancer. Common side effects of Flomax are runny nose, dizziness, and decrease in semen. Upon standing, a sudden drop in blood pressure may occur, rarely resulting in fainting. So when starting Flomax, avoid situations where injury could result. If considering cataract surgery, tell your eye surgeon you've taken Flomax. Do what millions of guys have already done. Ask your doctor about Flomax and call 877-4-FLOMAX for a free one-week trial. Why wait? Join the crowd. Flomax could make a difference in one week. In the NFL, the biggest games are decided by the smallest details. That's why Samsung imagined an LCD HDTV with 120 hertz, a true black screen, and twice the frames per second for exceptional motion clarity. We got it. Challenging. So you won't have to wait for further review to start the celebration. The decision is clear. Samsung, the official HDTV of the NFL. If you didn't watch NFL game day last Sunday night, here's what you missed. I got a feeling those starters are going to be in there for the entire game. They have balance offensively, defensively. Don't miss NFL game day, Sunday night at 11.30, only on NFL Network. I'm Wade Phillips, and you're watching NFL Network. Coaching them up. Welcome back to the Texas Bowl, presented by Radio Shack, and we've got a game. Chris Thurman, the interim head coach of the Houston Cougars. And Kevin Sumlin's going to be taking over 
after uh, his current boss in Oklahoma is done with a bowl game. We'll talk to him shortly. That kickoff drilled short, mishandled, out of bounds. At the 25, we'll talk to the incoming coach of the Cougars. Leadership up top. And uh, as a coach, I'm coming here to win championships. And Victoriously. This holiday, give him something he'll really love. The Philips Norelco Architect. Simplicity is giving him a gift he'll use every day. Longest field goal, 63 yards. Most fumbles career, 161. In a game, six. Some tend to obsess a bit about the game. It's kind of like that with bacon. Regular slice, 1 16th of an inch, 6, 16 to 20 slices per pound, derived from the French bacon and Teutonic Bacay. There's streaky bacon, cottage bacon, garlic, and collard bacon. I'm here to satisfy your football obsession 24 7, 365, and Wendy's is going to feed your bacon obsession with the Baconator. Six strips of bacon piled high atop two fresh, never frozen beef patties. It's seven fumbles, not six. I like bacon. Wendy's. That's right! Confident travelers have a secret. They know things other travelers don't. They know which travel days will save the most money with Expedia's airfare and hotel rate calendars. They know exactly what their hotel will look like with our virtual tours. And they always know what to expect, thanks to thousands of traveler opinions. No wonder more people choose Expedia than any other travel site. Go with confidence. Expedia.com. Welcome back to the Texas Bowl, presented by Radio Shack. 7-7 game as the Houston Cougars take over now at their own 25-yard line. And in a moment, we're going to hear from a man watching with great interest in Phoenix. Keenan Ulrich. What a short game. Kevin Sumlin's currently with the Oklahoma Sooners. will be playing in the Fiesta Bowl, and then he becomes the head coach of the Houston Cougars. He joins us by telephone from his uh, palatial estate in Phoenix. And uh, coach, we really appreciate the time. Congratulations on the new assignment. You, you must be a little distracted watching this game on television tonight, huh? Well, no, it's not distracted. Just uh, watching with, with interest and and, uh, and just enjoying it. I mean, it's been a great ball game. The guys are playing hard and, and uh, you know, just anxious to see what's gonna happen here. On second down, Keenum is going to get sacked is what's going to happen here. Coach, Coach, one thing I, I have to ask you about is during this time of year when there are so many different coaching changes and coaches are changing jobs and leaving programs to go start their new job, even if teams are in bowl games, you elected to coach the bowl game before coming to Houston. What was your thinking behind that, and, and how did you arrive at that decision? Well, I, you know, it was a decision that was made uh, by me and about by both administrations. I, I thought it was, you know, I thought it was important to finish out the season uh, with Oklahoma, with the guys who played so hard this year, and and you know, to achieve everything after winning the conference championship and to go to a BCS game and go there and win that game. And and also, you know, during this time, it's really the death period in recruiting. So you can't get into, into people's homes. You can't do any home visits or anything like that. You only have one phone call a week. So when you add everything up, and for what, you know, as, as well as I've been treated here at Oklahoma by the administration and by Bob Stoops, I, I thought it was the right thing to do to stay with, with our players here, coach through the bowl game, and, and I'll be at Houston January 3rd, the day after the game. And it was a great job that time. They tried to get Avery on a vertical. Raphael Priest ran with him the whole way. And, Coach, you talk about recruiting, the lifeblood of any program. What are your plans when you get here regarding the recruiting? Well, you know, what we've, been, we've been in contact with, with the commitments that are there right now. Uh, and, and as I said, you know, you've got one phone call a week. You can't really get into people's houses or homes or schools. You go off campus this time of year. So. Uh, we've generated a recruiting list and made some phone calls and started to set up some some visits really for January. And uh, things are on track, and, and I think they're looking pretty good right now. Kevin, we really appreciate the time, and uh, good luck in the 
Fiesta Bowl, and uh, really good luck when you get the reins here at the University of Houston. I know they're anxious to have you. Well, I'm anxious to get there. Thanks a lot, guys. Okay. Yeah, all, all the best, Coach. Happy New Year, Coach Sumlin. All right, you too. 7-7 seven, seven in the second quarter of the Texas Bowl, presented by Radio Shack. Coach Thurman and his team will be right back. Ahead of the curve, it takes vision. Leadership. Experience. Creativity. You need the right environment to live and learn. Be a leader. Change the world. Be world class. TCU. 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 Ahead of the curve. Where it begins. Break down the game before the game. Join Rich, Mooch, Marshall, and Dion before Saturday Night Football. Total Access on Location, presented by Sears, only on NFL Network. That's Ty. Cable's out. Again. Ashley. No DVR. Missed your favorite show. I got it. Mr. High Tech himself. Doesn't want to miss out on the newest toy. Chad. Addicted to Dish HD. This is so great, I never want to leave. Why go anywhere else? Dish Network. Best in HD, best DVR, best value. Have a structured settlement or annuity? J.G. Wentworth says it's your money. Use it when you need it. He's right. It's my money and I need it now. It's my money and I need it now. It's my money and I need it now. It's, it's my, my money, money and, and I, need I need it now. now. If you have a structured settlement and need cash now, call J.G. Wentworth for a free appraisal. There's no obligation. It's your money. Use it when you need it. Call 866-523-7563. NFL Network presents Saturday Night Football, and it's your place to see New England in prime time. The Patriots invade the Big Apple to close out the regular season with the Giants in an interconference battle. The run to the playoffs is on. NFL Network, your home for football 24-7, all year long. Saturday Night Football, Patriots, Giants. NFL Network has the best NFL highlight show on TV, and why wouldn't we? NFL Game Day, Sunday nights at 11.30 Eastern. NFL Network, football 24-7. And we've got some outstanding college football right now. It's the second annual Texas Bowl presented by Radio Shack, 7-7 in the middle of the second quarter. And for TCU, a little explosion into the backfield for Justin Watts. The tailback, and uh, he'll be the tailback now. And there's a, a good look at Chris Thurman, the interim head coach. We just talked to Kevin Sumlin. And, uh, man, what a, what a spot that this man has been in for about a month now. I don't think there's any easy way for these transitions to occur. And Chris is leading a staff now that tomorrow has no idea whether they have jobs. And he's doing a great job leading a favorite team early here in the first half. And, Charles, I think what gets lost in this whole thing is, remember, not only did Art Bryles lead, his co-offensive coordinator, Randy Clements, who also coached the O-line, and also Philip Montgomery, who coached the quarterbacks and running backs. They're all gone. So from the offensive side of the football, they elevated grad assistants to full-time status. So there's a bunch of coaches hanging in there and doing a great job. Three different positions. Very difficult to fit backfill on that, trying to get ready for a bowl game for Dalton with play action, and he's got one out to his tight end, Reagan. Here's the thing also about Chris Thurman. He knows a little bit about TCU. Does he ever? In other way, in a, for a lot of reasons, he was the right guy to be named to this spot for this game because look at that, 1995 and 98 through 2000, he worked under Gary Patterson on the defensive side of the football when Gary was a D coordinator before he became the head coach. So you would have to think he would know a little bit about getting ready for TCU. And I think he's done a marvelous job. Tremendous guy for us to talk with and, and get information from him before the ball game. And he's doing his level best in this one. Second and two. Go. A lot of time. <laughs> Could not get to the wide open Jimmy Young. That's... They, they put Rocky Schwartz in a bind there. Two verticals. Rocky Schwartz couldn't cover both of them. 
Dalton missed a great opportunity there, Charles. And how did he miss it? Not enough air under the football. Absolutely. He ends up throwing, he ends up showing his arm off with a flat line throw, and he puts a little air under it and just lets the receiver run to it. You He's saw, still running. You saw Rocky Schwartz, who we've been lauding for his run game ability to tackle, but that time in space, he really struggled. Third and a long one on the boot. Tight end's covered. This tight end got open, and he could not hit Reagan. Are you kidding me? I mean, I give the redshirt freshman, Charles, a ton of credit because he waited for the tight end on the crossing route to come open. How'd he miss him? He waited for the tight end. Here's how he missed him, Mike, because the tight, watch the tight end cross. Now watch what happens here. Look at Simon, number 12, the defensive back. See that right there? Just enough of a nudge to throw him off a little bit, just a little bit. And it just threw up time, but I'm with you. How did Andy Dalton think to go from one progression to a second progression on really a play that you're thinking really just one look? He looked up for the second one, had the patience, and was just unable to complete the ball. Yep. TCU will punt. Wash for the fourth time. McDaniel is back. This is a nice kick. Look at this coverage. Oh, son. Ball for that fair catch when there's a frog that close to you. Colin Jones, 28, with the tackle on a really nice 48-yard punt. And so Houston backs up to its own 10-yard line. 640 remaining in the second quarter. Good Texas Bowl game, 7-7. Going over and over, it's not just you. Stopping and starting, going urgently, you're not alone. Lots of guys experience male urinary symptoms due to BPH, also known as an enlarged prostate. But for many guys, prescription Flomax may relieve urinary symptoms due to BPH in one week. And who doesn't want to spend less time in the bathroom? Only your doctor can tell if you have BPH, not prostate cancer. Common side effects of Flomax are runny nose, dizziness, and decrease in semen. Upon standing, a sudden drop in blood pressure may occur, rarely resulting in fainting. So when starting Flomax, avoid situations where injury could result. If considering cataract surgery, tell your eye surgeon you've taken Flomax. Do what millions of guys have already done. Ask your doctor about Flomax and call 877-4-FLOMAX for a free one-week trial. Why wait? Join the crowd. Flomax could make a difference in one week. The new Philips Norelco Architect, a shaver with flexible heads which pivot and rotate freely to give you a great shave even on the neck. Simplicity is making hard-to-reach places easy to reach. Saturday night, Tom Brady and the undefeated Patriots put perfection on the line against the playoff hungry Giants. It's one for the record books. Patriots, Giants, Saturday night at 8, live on NFL Network. Hi, I'm Mike Holmgren, and you're watching the NFL Network. seen some pretty good play by both of these starting quarterbacks and we should tell you now that both teams will use two quarterbacks in the game but not yet Keenum with a block from Ganaway and he's got his man Harvey Gerard Harvey is speedster Roach finally caught up with him and Harvey a little shaken up on that 26 yard play and again, it's Keenum. Play action, doesn't have what he wants initially, steps up into the pocket. But Charles, what I love, even while he's stepping up into the pocket, his eyes are down the field. Excellent job in the pocket by Case Keenum. All the moving, moving around doesn't have to be wild scrambles to create plays in time. He's just sliding into the proper places in order to find guys downfield. We've got Anthony Ulrich now sitting right in here, okay? That's the inside guy on trips. Often look for him in the pass game. First down. Keenum. 
sacked by Chase Ortiz, who had just come back into the game. Along with Tommy Blake, Blake. there too. Right, two defensive ends. He was flushed pretty early on that play, wasn't he? Yeah. And he really had no time to set in the pocket, and that's what led to the sack. It was the initial pass rush that flushed him up inside. He actually had Arledge on about a 10-yard in route, working man-to-man -man against Stephen Coleman. Three sacks in the last two possessions by TCU. Again to Harvey. This one a short game. Keenum over to get a quick little tutorial on what they want from the bench. <laughs> when you're Case Keenum, you're going to take a lot of shots. You know, that's the kind of quarterback he is. He's going to scramble with his feet. He's going to scramble to buy time and throw, but he will take shots. You say that's one of the underrated parts of his game. It's not just his movement in the pocket. He will stay in the face of the, 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 the rush and deliver downfield. Third and six. He's only got two receivers out. They're both covered. Great job by Avery. Scramble rules again. Raphael Priest had really good coverage. Avery turned like he was going to go deep on the scramble and then came back to the football. Watch Priest. Great coverage. Both these guys can run. Now he turns up the field. Priest, Priest takes off. Breaks off to the sideline right at the first down mark. And really, that was good coverage by Raphael Priest. Really good coverage. Really good because he didn't allow him behind him. Kept everything in front. The second move got him. But again, Case Keenum keeping a play alive with his legs allowed that play to develop. Khan, now the running back at the 46, first and 10. There's the two. Donnie Avery to the 40. A gain of 14. And they're starting to work Avery. Remember, he told me yesterday he's going to run a 4-2 something at the combine, and we, we bet dinner on that, but everybody's cognizant of his speed. That time, Nick Sanders, not quite as quick as he is. He turned his hips, got out of his pedal. Now you got to make the tackle. You can't miss that tackle. There's that tackle, and you'll be watching him in the rearview mirror. Speaking of missed tackle. Yeah, terrific block on the inside, and McDaniel sprung by the block by number 10, Castile. And he's close for another first down. He's got about nine and a half. Starting to believe that what Houston is reading now is we can get Donnie Avery whenever we want on the 10-yard 10 route, 10 route because they're going to play off of him so much. Let's start to work that. And then when we don't go to him, we'll just come back to the guys who will make them miss. Short passes, give one-on-one -on -one outside, and then allow the receiver to win the battle. And so far, that's what Houston's doing on this drive. Yeah, I think they're so aware of his verticals that they, they can are, get back underneath. Yeah, you talk about Sanders getting out of his back pedals. Yeah. He might as well just turn and run in the other direction. And I understand why. Yeah, me too. Aldridge in motion. Second and one. Nice slant, better catch. Gerard Harvey. Ball came out. Is that even complete? Into complete? Yeah. Call it incomplete. That was going to be my question. Was it even a completed pass? Well, for just a moment, those hands stuck right out there. like Spider-Man. But, Brad, you called it exactly right. On the slant, it was a well-thrown football by Keenum. He put it exactly where it had to be, in front of the receiver, away from the corner. That's a catchable ball. Give the, the defense back. Stephen Hodge, a little bit of credit there. Charles, he, you see him rip it away. He, he battled the whole way yeah, on really that did. one. Because if he doesn't continue to finish the play, that turns into a catch, as you call Brad by Harvey, because of the way he went after the football. Third and less than one, guys. This will be interesting here. They get up to the ball real quickly now. <laughs> Belly. Can away, and he appears to have it. I'm not sure this is even a play, though. I think they're blowing the whistle before the snap. Flag come in. Did the flag go down, or are we going to get a review? Yeah, it looks like a flag, and the Houston players think against TCU. Right. Prior to the snap, offense number two lined up in the neutral zone. Oh, Five-yard penalty. Oh. The down that remains third. Offense number two would be Donnie Avery. That's a killer. Third and a foot. That's a killer. 
And that's part of when I tell you on third and short, I watched this on tape, they sprint up to the line of scrimmage and they try to get an advantage with a quick snap. And sometimes if a receiver's just run a route, it's difficult to get back and lined up. And sometimes they forget, am I online, right. offline? Am I covering a tight end, not covering right. a tight end? Right. It seems elementary, but when you're running it quickly, coming right back, sometimes the difficulties arise. So now it's third down, almost six. Double move, Avery had him beat, he didn't have the time. Kanan had a man down the middle of the field and couldn't get there, and the pass is incomplete Oof. because Chris Gilbert, number eight, was across the boundary. Donnie Avery had him by five yards on the stutter go. And don't be surprised if they go for it here. All right, that's Houston's M.O. But watch here on the sideline, watch Gilbert as he works inside, and then as he goes to catch, well, watch the leap at the end. No, that's, no, that's not no, textbook. No, what is that? What happened to dot the eye and drag the foot? I mean, there, he, there he is. is. No eye in Houston. I mean, he makes he makes a beautiful leap to the sideline, but the idea is again. And in college, remember, it's only one foot down. I thought two. it was I thought it was Bob Beeman. <laughs> Time I thought out. He took it on the long jump. Timeout called by Houston. They'll think about fourth down, and we'll be right back. My allergies make it hard to work, but I can't take an allergy medicine that puts my head in a fog. That's why I'm cleared and clear out here and in here too. Whether it's dust, mold, or Sam here, Claritin relieves all my worst indoor allergy symptoms for 24 hours. I sneeze, this guy could lose his nose. Only Claritin is proven to make me alert and focused. And Claritin won't make me drowsy like other allergy medicines can. For me, a sharp mind's more important than a sharp chisel. Non-drowsy Claritin. Live Claritin clear, indoors and out. Ain't your ordinary back, blew it up rookie year, now he's back on track. Bigger, better, stronger, much faster, and he's inspired by the greats of the past. What? Stay rough and rugged to the core, yeah. up for the task when you ask for more. Reggie Bush stay ballin', knowing that his calling is helping to rebuild New Orleans. Reggie Bush, y'all, live NFL, drink diet Pepsi. Yeah! Hi guys, what's going on? Buzzword bingo. Buzzword bingo? <laughs> These innovation meetings are killing us. The hype, the jargon. The buzzwords. Every time you hear one, you mark your card. In short, we are 100% committed to facilitating a culture of out-of-the-box, goal-oriented, value-added, disruptive web 3.0. Bingo. I'm Darren Horton inside our NFL Network studios. Coming up at halftime, we'll get you updated on all your bowl game action. Plus, the Patriots try for 16-0. Can the Giants stop them? We'll get you set for the game of the week. Maybe the game of the year, Patriots and Giants. The path to the draft is on NFL Network. You don't want to miss the 2008 Under Armour Senior Bowl. Top college seniors play for NFL coaches in this all-star matchup. It's Saturday, January 26th, and it's only on NFL Network. And Charles, that's one of our favorite weeks. It's a great week, isn't it? I mean, we have a ball watching the guys go and compete. That should be terrific. My top five senior football players in the country right now. I think Matt Ryan's the top three pick. This is fourth down. Keenum found his man, Harvey, for a first down. Just like they practiced it. Everybody was open. Khan was open deep on the corner route. Harvey underneath. Keenum bought some time and finally got it out to him. Difficult with their blitz package. Here they come. Keenum, get rid of the ball. Steps up inside Ortiz. Steps inside again. Just enough to get it done, Charles. And what's frustrating for a defensive front is chasing a guy around all evening and not having much success in getting him on the ground. And then when you think you have him hemmed in, he still creates a big play. 21 yards on fourth and five. And oh, now, great play. Yeah, Aldridge was chopped down because Brandon Richard, the fullback, could not get out to number 29, Stephen Hodge. And they had heavy personnel in the game. Richard, a tight end. No chance. And, and that wasn't a blitz either. That was not a blitz. That was just straight-ahead pursuit by Stephen Hodge. Read the play, read the toss, 
and just pursued straight ahead and came underneath the block. Recognized heavy first. Now look at this. Trips, runs, sprint into the field. Watch backside. Donnie Avery is backside by himself. One on one. One on one by himself. That's to the bottom of your screen. Second and 16. That's where he's looking. That's where he's going to the 15. He made the lost yard. He's back. Third down and nine. Mike Mayock says, I'm telling you. I'm trying to tell you what's going to happen. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great move. This is like basketball. Mike made a point to me before this game, and I think you, you, you were on the same page, Brad. It's a contrast. It's kind of, you know, Houston wants to play the up-tempo, press, run, the whole deal. TCU would love to shorten the game a little more with the running right. game. Well, here we got an isolation play like basketball. Everyone to one side of the field, one-on-one -on -one to your best receiver on the short side, and they found it. And here you go again. They're just kind of meandering up. They don't even want you to know what their personnel groupings are for the last minute. They got a wide receiver lined up as a tight end. But we also got a man in motion. That, I guess, Mike, is the downside of doing False it. False right. start. Jerron Harvey, number, number one, was lined up at Five tight yards. end. The down remains third. I guarantee you. He I guarantee you they were trying to sneak it to him yep. on, a, on a safety or a linebacker. And Dustin Dickinson, the offensive lineman, unable to hold in there long enough to get the playoff. Here he, he is, right, right here. over here. That's that Harvey. is a wide receiver. They're trying to sneak him inside. And the left guard, Dickinson, yep. going to pull because what they were going to do, Mike, was pull Dickinson on the front side to protect Keenum as a passer and look for your guy, Harvey. Right. Meanwhile, look at the... Look at the lot of chess games going on, Brad, huh? Look at the strip at the top of the screen. Tell me a minute and a half. Tell me Chris Thurman isn't having a good time tonight. Oh, yeah. Now, he'd have a better time if they could actually execute all of these. I'm telling you, it is so much fun to watch how wide open this Houston offense is. All of a sudden, coming off the sideline, there are three guys sprinting, the trips one side, all kinds of verticals. Now here's the thing that, that people need to remember about this. When Art Bryles left to become the Baylor head coach, you might talk about the two offensive coaches he took with him. They didn't have a playbook written down. It was all in Art Bryles' head. Yes. So, Always has been. So they're doing all this with basically notes that Anthony Evans, a grad assistant, kept charting plays the last two years. And not just that, but what we're seeing here, as wide open as they are, uh, I want your guys' opinion on this, as wide open as they are with all the formations and meandering and trying to hide personnel grouping, they haven't been very successful in getting plays off. The discipline hasn't been there. To me, that goes back to you've lost some coaches, you're filling in with grad assistants. During that time, maybe not as sharp as they normally would be. They played a half, they've got one score on basically a busted coverage. And this is third down and six of 15. Avery in motion. They're going to look for Lee. Look for Avery. Yep. That was an option to Avery, believe it or not. They have an option to hand that off or throw it to him. And another terrific play by Stephen Hodge. The TCU people will tell you that their defense really solidified at mid-year when they moved Hodge back up into that strong safety spot. And the way they use him, Charles, it's a 4-2 front. So they have five defensive backs. Hodge is more like a 225-pound wall linebacker in the NFL. But they use him like a linebacker slash strong safety. So sometimes he can be a deep defender, but they like to get him up in the primary run, run support. Now the clock is running, as you can see, at the top of your screen on the second quarter. And timeout has been called with 15 <laughs> seconds left by Houston. And if they decide to kick, the ball is at the 22. It would be about a 40-yard field goal for T.J. Lawrence. And uh, in that range, he's two out of four this year. And I believe they're out of timeout, so they've right. got to make that decision about what they want to do now. I mean, you could, you could run the play if you want, but you're risking, obviously, the clock running out. To me, now that you've got to kick the field goal, you're out of timeouts. Kick it and try and get something before the half. It's a tie ball game. Go in with a lead. Yep. Kick the field Kick goal. The field it's, goal. It's fourth and, and forever on the first down. And if you had a timeout in your pocket, you might consider running a play towards the end zone. Kick the field goal. Timeout is going to be called by TCU before the 39-yard try. Now, they have all three, correct? Right. You can't carry them over, can you? Does Coach Patterson not, not even use them up? Game. It's the old basketball. Does he use right? them up here? It'd be interesting. Not even in a bowl game. Let's 
uh, let's go back and have a look at one of the things that uh, we'll be talking about throughout the evening and the next several weeks. Mike, your top five seniors in the April draft. I like Matt Ryan as a top three pick from Boston College. I think Dorsey and Ellis are both top ten picks. You don't hear much about Cedric Ellis. He's every bit as good as Dorsey. They're both like Warren Sapp. Jake Long, prototype left tackle. Chris Long, Howie's son. I have never had more fun in my life watching a kid play on tape than Chris Long. He plays like every play is the last play he'll ever play. Houston going to try to untie it. Lawrence from 39 yards. And from 39 yards, T.J. Lawrence, the senior from Mount Pleasant, Texas, has given the Cougars a lead, which in all probability they will take into the dressing room. And can I just follow up on Long for a second? I've had a couple of scouts tell me that they have never graded players with higher motors. I've watched, I can't tell you how much tape I've watched in the last 10 years, and to watch a college defensive lineman which is a position where you see guys taking plays off all the time. Chris Long's playing out of position is what they call the five technique defensive end in the three four. That's not what he is. He's up against guys 20 to 30 pounds heavier than him on every snap. Brad's the most relentless pursuit guy I've ever seen on tape. It doesn't matter if they're up 30, down 30, big game, division one double. It doesn't matter who they're playing or when it is. The kid gives his all on every play. And I look at him and go, it doesn't matter where he goes. He's going to be a great NFL player because he's got the intangible plus he's athletic as can be. Meanwhile, your guy Ryan threw for 249 yards and three touchdowns. Boston College beat Michigan State in their bowl game today, 24-21. He's a winner. Whoa! Uh-oh. Hello. Now, this is interesting. we got seven seconds left. We've got to throw it up to the end zone. At the 45-yard line. You have to. Yeah. See, that's Alan Jones got in the way, but sorry. That's okay, Brad. I'm sorry I jumped in on you. The downside of squib kicking is you've got to get it past the front, front row. Line. And yep. when you don't get it past the front line, this puts you in this type of, a je in type of jeopardy. Mike, congratulations to your BC Eagles on the win tonight. <laughs> that reminded me of Tennessee, my alma mater, a few years ago against Georgia. Taking a lead late, squib kicking, giving up field position. Georgia scored with less than 10 seconds to go to Beetle. You give up too much territory. This gives TCU an opportunity. Two opportunities. Either throw it real deep or there's seven seconds and they have timeout. You pick up 15 yards and call timeout. Get out of bounds. Dalton's pass for Christian broken up at the 35-yard line. You get one more, but this one has to go to the end zone. Right. The last one, my point right. was... Pick exactly. up 10 to 15 and kick a field goal. Well, that's what I was thinking. When I saw it at the 45, with that amount of time and the timeouts, you can go anywhere in the field with the timeouts. Yep. Yeah, you guys have the right observation on that one. Now, we're down to you have no choice. Ball's got to go downfield. Big Ben. And Walter Bryant, number one, is 6'4", guys. He may be the guy that they're going to try and get it to downfield. Should be the last play of the half. Dalton. Outkick his coverage right there. <laughs> That'll be a cheap interception as the half will come to an end. Brad, Brad, as a former DB. Yeah, there are no cheap no, interceptions. No, no, that belly, that oh, no. That bad boy counts. <laughs> well, let me, let me tell you what. I've worked with a lot of quarterbacks. They hate that play. They hate that play. Hey, they play with skirts anyway. I don't want to hear a word from a quarterback. Now, what you're seeing here from TCU is not a chew-out session. It's not Gary Patterson upset with his team. He does this every ball game. He has words for his team before they go into the locker room to get them focused before they go in for their halftime words. Let's go down now to Kimberly Jones who's got the uh, Houston Cougars coach Chris Thurman. Coach Thurman your defense is playing with such energy. Are you pleased with them in the first half? Yeah yeah we're playing hard. We made we made a couple of mistakes against the option. They, they do such a good job running the option that we've got to shore up a couple of things. We made a mistake down there on the goal line but but uh, kids are playing hard, so we can't fault them for that. Is this the Case Keenan you're used to seeing buying time and making plays? Yeah, yeah, Case is unbelievable, like we talked about. I mean, he's grown up around football all of his life. He just finds ways to make plays, so hopefully he can keep doing that. How do you loosen things up for Aldridge in the second half? Well, they're doing a good job of Key and Anthony. They're trying to make sure Anthony doesn't beat them, which is smart, so we just got to find some other ways to get him the ball. Thanks, Coach. Back to you, Brad. Never mind loosening up for Aldridge. Loosen him up with a lozenge. Bless his heart. <laughs> He'll never make it through the second half. When we return, Darren Horton, Rod Woodson, and Jamie Dukes from our L.A. studios for the Texas Bowl halftime show. It's 10-7 Houston in the Texas Bowl, presented by Radio Shack. 
The Texas Bowl on NFL Network is brought to you by Radio Shack, where this holiday season, you don't just buy stuff, you do stuff. headsets. Find all the stuff you need for all the stuff you got at your neighborhood Radio Shack. Do stuff. Hey guys, they were out of Snickers. No! But, um, I got these Snickers dark bars with dark chocolate instead. So. Yeah! are here again, which means your Honda dealer is offering great deals on every car in stock. This holiday season is the perfect time to get into a new Accord, popular Civic, fun-loving Fit, or any Honda you desire. Just choose your favorite color and think Honda for the holidays. Lease a Honda Accord for $2.59 a month for well-qualified customers. I'm Tony Dunsey, and you're watching NFL Network. Halftime at the Texas Bowl, 10-7, Houston with the lead. Champ Sports Bowl highlights Michigan State and Boston College. We pick it up. Second quarter action, BC with the ball. They're tied at seven, and Matt Ryan, the pros can't wait to get their hands on him. Backing up and check out this pass. 29 yards to Rich Gunnell. The Eagles will take a 14-7 lead. We go ahead, fourth quarter action, and it's Ryan once again showing you that big arm. Rich Gunnell, this time good for 68 yards and a touchdown. The Eagles go up 24-13. Ryan would throw for 249, three touchdowns in his farewell performance. We go ahead, fourth quarter action. Brian Hoyer rolling out of his own end zone, a little too strong, picked off by Paul Anderson at the 31. BC takes over with 223 to play, and then on a fourth and one, Ryan follows his line, picks up a couple of yards, and yeah, Boston College, they win their eighth consecutive bowl game. They won 11 games, Matt Ryan's final game, three touchdown passes. Uh, at the Emerald Bowl, it's Maryland 14, Oregon State 7, Chris Turner, two touchdown passes, one to Isaiah Williams, the other to Darius Haywood. Maryland looking for three straight bowl wins and coming up on New Year's Eve at 6 Eastern. Catch the Insight Bowl featuring Indiana against Mike Gundy's Oklahoma State Cowboys live from Sun Devil Stadium only on NFL Network. And of course, tomorrow, the path to perfection. Let's check in with Rich Eisen and the gang in New Jersey. Welcome to halftime of the Texas Bowl college football here on NFL Network, which switches back to the pros right here in Giants Stadium on Saturday night. The Giants and the Patriots playing a big ball game. Rich Eisen along with Marshall Falk, Deion Sanders, and Steve Mariucci right here in Giants Stadium where you had some pretty solid games back in the day, huh? Yeah, I did Deion? what I did. You know, they didn't retire my jersey or anything <laughs> like that. But I, you know, I didn't. How about you here in Giants Stadium? <laughs> uh, I did any, okay. You had some good ones? Okay, Jets. I played against the Jets when I was in the yeah. AFC and against the Giants in the NFC. And I think I won more than I lost. You're equal opportunity abusers there you on go. the two New York teams. And Steve, you had any big games as coach here in Giants Absolutely. Stadium? Many. Many. <laughs> uh, you know what? I never lost here. Thank, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> you, you, know, all time, you, know, all, no. you know who also never lost, has never lost here? Tom Brady. 7-0 mm. right here yeah, against both anyway. the Giants and the Jets, just like you, just like you. So we're here on the set uh, throughout the game on Saturday night, before it, during it, and after it. Guys who are in the booth calling the game join us right now. Brian Gumbel and Chris Collinsworth. Gentlemen. All right, Rich, thanks so very much. Here in New York, as you might well imagine, much of the pregame talk is centered around Tom Coughlin and the big question of will he or won't he play all of his Giants. No matter what happens on Saturday night, win or lose, the Giants are locked in the number five slot. They're going to be going to Tampa Bay to play the Buccaneers. And so I turn to you, Mr. Collinsworth, will he or won't he? Well, first of all, you know, regardless of what happens, Tom Coughlin will be criticized for this decision. He understands that. We understand that no matter what happens. But after talking with the players and 
you've just got to think that these guys have made up their mind and maybe forced Tom Coughlin's hand a little bit that they want to play. They want to take a shot at knocking off the New England Patriots. You know, some of the conversation that's going on around New York is sort of New Yorkers don't give anything to anybody, especially somebody from Boston. And so you just get the feeling as we talked to those guys yesterday, it's game on. And it's not half game on. It's game on for this one. And for Coughlin, too, the past is prologue. He's a guy who's been on the other side of this equation before. He's had a 14-2 and two club. And in the past, he has always played it all out, even when the game didn't mean anything. Yeah, he has. He's an old school guy, as he calls himself. He's a dinosaur. Mm -hmm. And he believes that you go out and you play the game. Now, that's not saying that should the Patriots get up by three touchdowns, or for that matter, should the Giants get up for three touchdowns. Maybe he wouldn't decide to rest some guys at the end of the football game. But I think the thought is that we are going in to win the game. He said, I don't know how to coach it any differently. We have been with these players all season talking about preparation, talking about how you win football games. And what am I supposed to tell them now? This is not important. Take the day off. Take the week off. We don't know how to do that. Yeah, and just a couple of weeks ago, they beat a Philadelphia team that, don't forget, gave the New England Patriots fits. Mm -hmm. The uh, Giants can get after the quarterback, and they can run the football. Two elements that could serve them well on Saturday night. Rich? All right, guys. So our men in the booth speaking to the men in blue, and it sounds like the Giants are going to be playing their guys. They need to. They need to, and when you, when you think about it, uh, guys getting hurt, you can't think about that. You go out there, you play the game, you finish the game, and if you win the ball game, you go into the playoffs with, 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 with a lot of, with a head full of steam, with a lot of emotion, with a lot of, a lot of, a lot of confidence in what your team is capable of doing. I'm a kid, and I'm playing, I'm going against the biggest bully in the neighborhood, and he's coming in my backyard to try to whoop me, and I don't want to fight? Please, I want to fight. This is my job. This is my occupation. This is what's providing for me as well as my kids and family and friends. <laughs> I'm going to put up a fight, and I'm going to kick some butt, and we're going to win this game. That's the way I'm thinking. Well, that's what the fans across America want to see. They want to see the Giants fight these guys and maybe beat this. Nobody's going to hand this team the record. The Giants want to take it from them, and they've got a full week. Now it's a Saturday night game. They've got a full week to rest up for that Tampa game, at least a full week. So let's play ball. And, you know, you said you've never lost here. And Tom Brady's never lost here. You know who's lost here more than they've won? The 2007 New York Giants. They're just three and four here mm. in Giants Stadium. Seven and one on the road. That's why they made the playoffs. So perhaps they want to get that thing settled. Throw the records but the out. One, the yeah. one good thing is throw the records it, out. They, they sacked the quarterback. They, they sacked the quarterback. One good thing they sacked the quarterback, and the Patriots throw the ball more than anybody. So I, I want to see how how that mix come. The Giants got a nice pass rush. They're going to have to, the Patriots, they're going to have to run the football. I know Tom Brady, he wants to get his records. They want to stack them up, but they're going to have to run the football against this when team. When we watch the Patriots, their vulnerabilities are what? The running game. You can run on them. Junior Seau taking the wrong gap. Being that what, what makes him great also makes him suffer because he's always rushing in, taking the wrong gap at times. You got to run this ball. I'm telling you, take the ball out of Eli Manning's hands, and that's no slight against Eli, but you got a time of possession to control the clock, keep Tom Brady on the sideline. Well, that's a little bit why the Giants are a dangerous team right now. They've been criticized for having a second-half slump, right? But they run the football in colder weather like this, and they're going to rush the passer against these good passing teams. Should be a heck of a game. Well, in the second half of the Texas Bowl, Houston and TCU are going to play their starters. They're going to play. They're going to play to win. But before we send you back out for the second half, we want to talk about Bill Belichick, the we being the four of us here, and Steve Sable, who takes a look at this enigmatic coach. Alex Klein is a real Geico customer, not a paid celebrity. So to help tell his story, we hired that guy who does those funny sound effects. My car was totaled over a thousand miles from home. <laughs> so I called Geico. And in less than 10 business hours, I got a check for a new car. <laughs> Geico, real service, real savings. I gotta tell you, business is booming. FedEx helps solve all our shipping challenges. Overnight, ground, even the heavy stuff. FedEx Express also ships internationally. These things are selling like hotcakes in India. India, huh? Now, isn't it difficult to ship there, you know, with customers and all? Yeah. With online tools and a dedicated customer service team, FedEx makes it easy. Goose, this is Iceman. We've got a wild bird. 
FedEx. International shipping made easy. Visa makes it easier to get ready for game day. Life takes Visa. The delicious flavor of two hot, juicy burgers with jalapenos, hickory smoked bacon, cheddar, and pepper jack cheeses melted in between. The jalapeno cheddar double melt. Get it now for a limited time. Only at Wendy's. That's right. tools have evolved. The new lithium Ryobi One Plus tools work at full power twice as long with a battery that fits all your other One Plus tools. Ryobi One Plus. Pro features, affordable prices. You'll find them only at the Home Depot. With Ellis Island and Lady Liberty as the backdrop, Deion Sanders arrived for work on Friday. Marshall was with me. No, I wasn't. They put me on the bus. <laughs> That's the way you made it to some World Series back in the day, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing about the arrogance or ego driven. You know, I had to avoid traffic. It was right. a worthy cause. Yeah. yeah. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. At any rate, we're uh, getting ready for a big time ball game right here in Giant Stadium on Saturday night. The place where Bill Belichick spent 11 years as a Bill Parcells assistant, eight with the Giants, three with the New York Jets, with whom he was the head coach for less than a week. Bill Belichick, despite all his time on the football scene and hoisting Lombardi three times, is still an enigma to many NFL fans. That's why we need to turn to Steve Sable for a sound off and find out who is Bill Belichick. Great teams have always had a playing style similar to their coaches' personalities. Lombardi's Packers perfected the power sweep. Bill Walsh's 49ers ran the sophisticated West Coast offense. But what about Bill Belichick's New England Patriots? On the surface, they have no defining style. Turns out, that's exactly how Belichick wants it. All right, here we go. Bill Belichick is a man of contradiction, the type of coach who always carries a whistle but rarely needs to use it. A coach who appreciates football's past, yet is always focused on the future. It's good. <laughs> Critics say he's as unreadable as James Joyce and doubly complex. But that inscrutability may be his genius and the reason for his team's success. Like their coach, the Patriots are not concerned with developing a specific style. They can beat you with the pass or the run, with defense or special teams, with power. They pulled it off. And they prepare for every possibility. OK, now look, what I'm looking for here is speed, communication, and alertness to all the different situations, OK? Mentally, Play it like you're playing a game, all right? And I don't want to hear about what any of the situations are. You just play them. Yeah, no. The Patriots don't practice no. definites. They practice the hypothetical. No, all I want to do is create different situations, keep them alert, keep them thinking. Belichick makes his players imagine every possible variation of a play. Call it situational foresight. What are you guys thinking about right here? Six seconds. Getting yeah, out of bounds. Scramble. Ready for the scramble, okay? Don't be afraid of throwing an incomplete pass. Okay. You know, especially in a two-minute situation where you're going to stop the clock. You're better off in this situation where you're down by a touchdown having less time and more timeouts than more time and fewer timeouts. That's it. Opponents never know what style the Patriots are going to play, Go and that's ball. because the Patriots have ball. so it's many it's variations to choose from. Right there, beautiful. There we go. Call it, A.D. Right. Call something else. At that's the situation right Belichick has already prepared them for. All right, it's down in distance. Down in distance. Let's be right on these substitutions. Know the situation here. Know the situation. That is just great stuff, Steve Sable. And since joining the Patriots in 2000, Belichick's teams have only improved with each month. 
culminating with a 29 and 7 record in December and January. And, and I, I, I loved hearing what I just heard because I think to me it points out what makes the Belichick teams great and what separates the Belichick teams from a lot of other teams in the NFL and it's knowing the situations it's whether uh, Mike Vrabel can play both sides of the ball it's Kevin Falk stripping Ed Reed in that crucial interception towards the end of the first half in that Ravens Patriots game that the Ravens came away with no points it's Vince Wilfork hopping on the ball against the Jets in the playoffs last year because he realized it was a loose ball and no one else did and I'm just wondering why that is. Is it just hearing Belichick go over these things all the time in practice? Is that what He's it is? Prepared. They're prepared for everything. The one thing is we're, we're going to marvel over this season and what they've done. But I think you have to look at his, the, the whole time there, his ability to get these guys, and, and they shuffle guys in and out to buy into one thing, and that's winning, w regardless of what you have to do. That's if Junior Seau has to play fullback, come off the bench. That's if Rodney Harris has to, has to come in, and they ask to play in the box or in the back. It doesn't matter. Troy Brown, hey, we're going to put you at nickel. You're going to cover some guys, but you're not going to start at receiver. Whatever they have to do, he's got these guys to buy into it, and that's tough. You know that. I think he do a great job of, of, of mixing the young and the old. And as far as the offensive line, having an old veteran, as far as the receivers, having a veteran. Each segment, they feature a veteran. And one thing about these guys, like you said, they buy into what he does, and he gets the most out of every guy on that team. He does, and he and Scott Pioli have done a nice job drafting and hitting on most of their draft picks and also acquiring free agents that they bring in and they make very productive. But that winning in December and January, making his team better and keeping them fresh and healthy towards the end is very, very impressive. All part of what uh, everyone refers to as the Patriot way, and their way has been uh, perfect throughout this regular season. And as we get you set for kickoff, this is the way things look on NFL Network Saturday with Playbook. A who is perfect? And then, of course, six hours of pregame before kickoff. Six hours? Yes. <laughs> Get up to speed with everything you need to know for your fantasy team. Sunday News Update, presented by Verizon Wireless on NFL Network. Well, the New England Patriots go for a perfect season live on NFL Network. What started as a dream is now on the threshold of reality. The genius coach, the golden boy quarterback, poised to lay claim as the greatest football team ever. Yeah, pretty much. Man, I hope the Giants win. If you're already a dynasty, what comes after that? The perfect season is on the line. Patriots-Giants, Saturday at 8 on NFL Network. victoriously get ready for a war on january 1st jet lee and jason statham are at war rated r you and i are gonna finish this own it on dvd and blu-ray january 1st <sighs> their day begins like yours <laughs> quick breakfast drive down to work Another day on the job. Good morning, Jerry. Good morning, ma'am. But after all the pleasantries, <laughs> we talk about the weekend. From that point on, it's all business. Thank you for that and welcome back to the Texas Bowl presented by Radio Shack 10 7 Houston the score Brad Sham with Charles Davis and Mike Mayock and the story of this game really Charles has been the fact that Houston's 500 yards a game offense has been bottled up. It's been bottled up in the run game but the guy who's made that made things work for them has been Case Keenum their quarterback because of his feet and his elusiveness in the pocket. They did score the first touchdown of the game. He found Andre Kahn downfield. The other quarterback did a good job there. Spread, option, made Rocky Schwartz miss for a touchdown. 
But Andre Allrich has really been bottled up, has run for negative yards in the first half. TCU's defense has been stout. The number that jumps out to me in the pass game, 177 yards for Houston, 67 of them on the big scramble play by Case Keenum. Outside of that, Charles, Look at the time of possession. What's that tell you? For TCU, not good because they've won their last 19 when they've won time of possession. So the second half about to begin, and TCU, having won the toss and deferred their option, will have the football. And again, if you joined us along the way, TCU down a running back anyway. Uh, lost Joseph Turner their starting tailback to a knee injury so Justin Watts and Ryan Christian have been handling the duty T.J. Lawrence kicks off and it's Christian at the eight that's a nice return for Ryan Christian as we go down to the sideline to join our partner Kimberly Jones. Thank you, Brad. I just talked to K Gary Patterson, the TCU coach. He said offensively, it's as simple as this. We've got to get in the end zone. He said, we've got to score. You can't compete against a high-powered offense and expect to win 14 to 10. Defensively, he said, we knew what was coming a couple of times. We didn't make the play. Case Keenum has been a headache to them. Gary Patterson told his defenders, you're reaching for their quarterback. You've got to tackle his legs. And that's how you coach. <laughs> that was thing. Thanks, Kim. From the 40, it's still Andy Dalton, the quarterback. And it is Justin Watts for a short gain. And I, I don't think we've had the opportunity to mention, but we'll re, uh, redo it if we have, that both of these teams frequently use two quarterbacks in a game. So if you see a switch, don't think somebody did something wrong unless... TCU's quarterback throws an interception and not one like uh, like they did at the end of the half because the rule they've had since midseason is Gary Patterson told his quarterbacks throw an interception you're sitting next to me on the next series and they've cut their interceptions down since then lots of flags as Christian comes close for the first down but I think he's going to get a chance to do it again looks like holding TCU. And Ryan Christian becomes an increasingly important person in this offense with the injuries at tailback. He's the guy that can line up at wide receiver, come Holy in motion like he just offense, did. Offense number 79, 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat second down. That's the right That's tackle, the Nick Richmond. Richmond. Sorry, That's Mike. his second one, Correct. his second holding penalty. Both were big plays by TCU that have to come back. And remember, guys, we talked at the beginning of the game, we felt that what slowed TCU down offensively was TCU. The penalties and the mistakes. Here we come out in the second half, and what happens? Good play right away. Get a penalty. Nick Richmond, you mentioned his second one. But I remember talking with Mike Schultz, the offensive coordinator, and what did he say about Nick Richmond and the guy that rotates in, Marcus Cannon? They're both punks. Richmond's a sophomore, Cannon a red shirt, red shirt freshman. Second and 16, screen, Christian. We got the some of the penalty yardage back. And it'll be third and ten. And Brad, does that remind you of a play call back in the first half after the last holding penalty? Yep, sure Screen does. Pass. Try and get part of it back. Give you a manageable second and third down situation. Now this one is going to be third and almost ten. They had a little bit better situation last time. For the year, TCU's 39% offensively on third down. Nickel package for Houston. Three-man rush. And with time, Dalton's able to complete the ball, but not for first down yardage. The tailback, or the uh, wide receiver, Bart Johnson. Rodney Rito, number four, plays in their nickel and dime packages, does a nice job of knowing where the first down marker was, defended it, and then made the tackle on the spot about a yard short. Now here they are at midfield. This is what Houston did on the first possession of the game. And Houston went for it, didn't make fourth and one. TCU apparently is going to let Wash punt the ball away. And look at Wash. He's six foot four, 177 pounds. His teammates call him Bones for obvious reasons. If we saw him in pregame, he's not 177 in the pass. McDaniel calls for a fair catch. Better punt. Yeah, real good kick by the special teams player of the year for TCU, Derek Wash. 
And that ball is at the 14 yard line when Houston gets it for the first time in the third quarter a 37 yard kick 10 7 Cougs. I think this might be our lucky day. I think it might be. I think this is what we've been waiting for. I think it is. Yes, it, it turned, turned blue. blue. The Coors Light cold activated bottle. The mountains turn from white to blue when your beer reaches the perfect temperature. It's blue like your eyes. My eyes are green. Only from Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Get NFL Mobile only from Sprint on the all-new Motorola Razr 2. Sharper than ever. Hello, Moto. For drivers who want to get the most out of their cars, it's Bridgestone or nothing. The Inside Bowl on NFL Network. The electric Cowboys offense looks to heat up the desert when they square off with the Hoosiers. The Inside Bowl, Monday at 6 on NFL Network. Will the Patriots be perfect? Well, tomorrow night, NFL Network presents the Patriots and Giants in a regular season-ending matchup, it's Patriots-Giants live on NFL Network tomorrow night at 8 Eastern. I was up in New England last Thursday prior to the Miami game. I interviewed Bill Belichick and, and watched them practice in a blizzard. Fascinating. Keenum on first down, avoiding trouble and trouble again. Nice job. <laughs> That's smart. It, it, that's a little growth from just the first half. Did we not talk about that in the first half about making a decision to either get rid of it or get out of bounds? Yep. This time he made a decision and it worked. Yes, it's second and ten, but it could have been second and right. You're right. 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 He doesn't take the sack, gets rid of the ball. And TCU took away the bubble screen, which is why he had to pull it down, like you said, Charles, and make a decision. They blitzed with Hawthorne, the linebacker. He was the first man through, and Tommy Blake, whose name we haven't mentioned much this evening, was the second one understand that a big piece of Houston's offense or bubble screens the wide receivers TCU is just attacking the wide receivers for the line of screen. So they go option on second down and Anthony Aldridge's long night continues. Seems to me that right now TCU's defense is playing the game downhill. Yep. You know, you always hear that term about a guy running back going downhill, meaning he has the momentum and he's carrying the punch to the defense. The last two plays, TCU's defense might use the word attacking the bubble screen. That's what they just did on that option. They just attacked it straight away. No hesitation, no worry about assignments. Everyone was in the right spot. And now every offensive coach's favorite call, 3rd and 10 to 14. <laughs> Where's that on my plate? Where, what have you got for that? Why, what you've got is Keenum to Harvey for a first down. Congratulations have to go out to Rafe Mata, right, and George Pugh for sharing play calling in the absence of Art Bryles. They had this call on their play sheet, Brad. But it took protection against their blitz package. You see right there, 28 coming in, Hodge coming from the strong safety position, picked up by the back. That's good coaching. It's understanding what you're going to see in a blitz package first down. That man walking off the field, the left tackle, Sebastian Vollmer, obviously shaken up, the junior from Karst, Germany, replaced by Josh Bell, a sophomore from Hickok, uh, Hitchcock, Texas. You know, I saw our sideline reporter, Kim Jones, talking to him yesterday. I think he's got a nickname or something. We'll let you, oh, there, there it oh, is. Oh, boy, he got tied up leg to leg with Tommy Blake. Dustin Dickinson, Jack Blake right back into him, rolled him up. 
So on first down with a new tackle, Keenum's in trouble. And this sack is going to go to Jason Phillips, the middle linebacker. I think Cody Moore was only there pushing the pocket, too, from his defensive tackle position. Hey, Kim, what, what was that nickname for Volmer? Hey, he was just shaking up, guys. He came off. He wouldn't let the trainers touch him. He grabbed some water, went right back in the game. What, what, what nickname were you oh, calling Oh, that's Seabass. That's oh. my guy, Seabass. <laughs> <laughs> that might coming in from Germany. Getting a very American nickname. But wait a minute, wait a minute. Why is he sea bass? I don't get it. Is it because of Sebastian and they just, you know, Trent made it sea bass? Yo, Kim, are you there? Yeah, and you know, guys, he has a German flag around that right biceps of him, of his. He remembers where he came from, and trust me, he tells me he calls home to mom every Sunday. The Cougars are lucky on that second down play because it went right through Jerron Harvey's hands, and that's a ball that these two guys, I have the pleasure of sitting next to tonight. Either one of them would have drooled over that one. A tip drill like that, that's got INT written oh, all over Oh, man. To be able to grab it and take it the other way. That's what dreams are made for, though, right? I, mean, I always why... like the tip drill draws because, A, the ball was in the air, and, B, there's no such thing as pass interference. Exactly. Now so you can light somebody up. Jack someone on the other side. <laughs> now we got, before they had third and 10, now it's third and 13, and someone running onto the field late. Is that L.J. Castillo? Yep. It is. Oh. High school quarterback, L.J. Castillo. Third and 13, Keenum, look out. That one planted right into the ground, looking for Harvey. Really good coverage on Harvey that time by David Roach, number 27. Ortiz, yeah, and Ortiz coming off the edge really forced. First of all, Keenum fumbled the snap. Second of all, Ortiz came in real hard. That play was doomed from the very beginning, Charles. And the coverage downfield, I realize Houston made a first down on this possession. But all in all, did that not feel like a dominant defensive series for TCU? It did, and now watch Brian Bonner, the explosive punt returner. And one long one already tonight. From the 27, he got a block on the edge. Don't flip. Another good return. No, no, no yellow on the floor. And another good return for Bonner. That one went 31 yards on a 49-yard punt. Mike, you played a lot of special teams in your career. It's fun to watch, isn't it? When you have oh, a yeah. great guy who's back there, makes you, you want know to know block, he can it? it. Yep. 10-7 Cougars in the third quarter. All right, the play is 60 stretch, Farla. <sighs> 60 stretch, far. Come on, let's go, let's go. 60 stretch, far. I won, ready? Hey, you need this. I'll take those. Wake up, people! New Diet Pepsi Max with ginseng and more caffeine. Didn't get what you wanted for Christmas. Like no, no, I, what do I do with it? That's... Get amazing savings on home appliances at Sears. Starting the day after Christmas, buy one, get 10% cash back. Buy two, get 15% cash back. Buy three or more and get 20% cash back on any home appliance over $3.99. Plus, get 12 months no interest, no payments with your Sears card. Or get free delivery and haul away on any home appliance over $3.99. Through Saturday, January 5th, it's your chance to get what you want. Sears. What's behind the grill? is what matters most. For those who want it more, there's professional grade. Welcome back to the Texas Bowl, presented by Radio Shack. Houston and TCU, old rivals from the Southwest Conference, and then they were together in Conference USA. And now TCU in the Mountain West, but they do know each other. Dalton on first down. Philip Hunt just made a meal of him. Been a while, really, since we've called his name. Remember early in the game, we thought he forced a fumble that was never called? Good get off. But See look the, at that. The right hand rip, way too quick for the offensive tackle. He's got nine and a half sacks. That makes ten and a half, Charles. And that was 
uh, Marcus Cannon, the backup right tackle. He rotates in with Nick Richmond. Yeah. Not necessarily, Richmond didn't go out necessarily because of the penalty. They do rotate at that right tackle spot, but look for Hunt. They look for them to keep moving him around to try and find good matchups. Second and 17, a draw. Not much for Justin Watts. So this field position at the 42-yard line after the 31-yard punt return by Bonner, one sack and a short run will kind of make that all go away. And now Andy Dalton's got third and double digits to contend with. Mike, you evaluate a lot of talent. When you saw Philip Hunt with the great get off in the sack, I know you had to like an evaluation. The very next play comes out and plays the run real well. And you have to get He plays with leverage, Charles. He, even though he's undersized at 250, he can get up underneath those bigger guys because he's got tremendous power in his butt and thighs. He's at right end now. And he got back into the pocket again. Dalton completes the pass. And Christian, despite breaking tackles, cannot get the first down. And that's the kid that's helping keep them in the football game, Christian. Remember, they lost Joseph Turner earlier. He's the guy that's playing both running back and now he's the slot guy. Wheel route, now he's gonna stop. He knows the corner has it deep. It's a wheel stop, almost gets to the first down. And again, Charles, fourth and two or three. What do you do? There's Turner. Yeah, Joseph Turner, who injured his knee earlier in the game, can only watch. I like it, they're going for it. It's a ball game. And even though they've got five out there, they may sometimes motion back and use Dalton. Fourth and two. First and ten. Let's see the ball. That's a good mark. They got a good mark. Yeah, they gave him the, the right mark also to Jeremy Curley. Ernest Miller, number five, with the stop, but Curley got the first down. This is the fourth time today I've seen this route out of trips. The inside guy on trips running the out because number five, the drop linebacker, Miller, plays off him. It's an easy pitch and catch as long as you put the ball out in front of the receiver. They clear with the outside two receivers, let Curley run the out underneath it, and it's worked pretty well each time. It's a tight end in the slot. And the tight end came back and caught the ball. And look at Shea Reagan motor down the field. He, he had 14 catches for the year, but he had several of them for big plays. He had a 51 yard long. That one was 14 yards. Brad, he averages almost 20 yards a catch. So he hasn't caught a lot of passes like you see sometimes in the spread. But when he catches it, they go for big plays. I think that as, as, as Kim told us, Gary Patterson kind of got out his offense a little bit and they seem to be responding. And they need points on the board here. They need, they, and they need seven. Because Houston, you can't follow them up all night. You wouldn't think. Watts got it down inside the 15, stopped by Trent Allen. There's your boy Newhouse drawing a little bit there. Relatives, Brad? Relatives, you know, number 70, the left tackle, Marshall Newhouse, is uh, cousins with a proud former Houston Cougar, Robert Newhouse, who uh, played some fullback for the Dallas Cowboys and had the greatest thighs in the history of football. Robert Newhouse running and running back number <laughs> I would say next to Earl Campbell. Yeah, okay, all right. So I'll, okay, yeah, I'll give you Earl. Whenever you say greatest, you yeah, got to think right. Something. Yeah, what was I thinking? Okay, second grade. Second down. Dalton kept that one, and the Cougars were waiting for him that time. Right in the middle, Cody Pree, number 56, and the free safety, our man Rocky Schwartz. You don't hear... Too many people with the last name of Schwartz and the first name or nickname of Rocky. <laughs> but he has earned it. He has come by it honestly, the way that he comes up and hits people. They try and keep him out of pass coverage as best they can. But anything that has to do with run support, they want to run number 20 up in there. Double tight. Why off now? Here comes motion to trip. Watch the pick play. Or the rub. Oh, or the pick. He almost an interception. Was fortunate. He's lucky he threw off his back foot yes. and didn't get it. He won it. If he gets anything on it, it's going the other way. And in the red zone, with the score like it is, here comes the route. 
That's the double move, the slant and go up top. That, that was good trying coverage. To get to. That's good coverage by Quinta Williams, number eight. He yeah. took that away, and then when he tried to come back, look out. Now, this is interesting because the kicker, Chris Manfredini, made his last 10 field goals during the year, but this one is uh, spotted at the 19. So it's 29 yards, and he was worse in the 20s. He was four for seven on the year from this distance, which I don't get because he was 10 for 11 from 30 to 39. That this is the angle, guys. This is to tie. <laughs> Figured it out. There Figured we. it out. Dan <laughs> Fredini ties it up. He'll tell you it was the angle. You know, when, when you have the short kicks, it's the angle that hurts you. We've got 6.30 remaining in the third quarter. We got a good Texas Bowl presented by Radio Shack. 10-10. you need for all the stuff you got at your neighborhood radio shack do stuff if you didn't watch nfl game day last sunday night here's what you missed i got a feeling those starters are going to be in there for the entire game they have balance offensively defensively don't miss nfl game day sunday night at 11 30 only on nfl network Expensive brokers are shaking because E-Trade just introduced their completely re-engineered market trader. It's easy. It's extraordinary. It's E-Trade. Have a structured settlement or annuity? J.G. Wentworth says it's your money. Use it when you need it. He's right. It's my money and I need it now. It's my money and I need it now. It's my money and I need it now. It's, it's my, my money, money and, and I, I need, need it now. now. If you have a structured settlement and need cash now, call J.G. Wentworth for a free appraisal. There's no obligation. It's your money. Use it when you need it. Call 866-447-0873. The air conditioner and the lawnmower. Both are ideas from the minds of African Americans. Support the United Negro College Fund because a mind is a terrible thing to waste. L Network presents Saturday Night Football, and it's your place to see New England in prime time. The Patriots invade the Big Apple to close out the regular season with the Giants in an interconference battle. The run to the playoffs is on. NFL Network, your home for football 24-7, all year long. Saturday Night Football, Patriots, Giants. Don't miss our college bowl games on NFL Network. Indiana and Oklahoma State in the 2007 Insight Bowl, live from Tempe, Arizona, Monday at 6 Eastern on NFL Network. Mike Mayotte's hoping at 6 p.m. because he's working the game. That's, that's going to be a heck of a ball. <laughs> you just getting too. on your bike when you get out of here and just pedal right over the right over the fence. Are you kidding me? I, I'm getting paid to talk about football. You're going to see some exciting let's players go. in that one. Kellen Lewis, the quarterback at Indiana. Dontrell Savage, tailback at Oklahoma. State, James Hardy, Darius Bowman from Oklahoma State. There's a kick designed to keep it away from Allridge, and they did that, but they still gave Houston the ball up near the 40 on the return by Mark Hafner, the tight end. Holiday, give him something he'll really love. The Philips Norelco Architect. Simplicity is giving him a gift he'll use every day.
language all its own. Are your tires smart enough to translate? For drivers who want to get the most out of their cars, it's Bridgestone or nothing. When well, the New England Patriots go for a perfect season live on NFL Network. What started as a dream is now on the threshold of reality. The genius coach, the golden boy quarterback, poised to lay claim as the greatest football team ever. Yeah, pretty much. Man, I hope the Giants win. If you're already a dynasty, what comes after that? The perfect season is on the line. Patriots Giants Saturday at 8 on NFL Network. I'm Mike McCarthy, and you're watching NFL Network. Welcome back to the Texas Bowl, presented by Radio Shack. We got a ball game, 10 to 10 game. And when I watched tape of Tommy Blake, his junior year, he was an explosive, quick twitch athlete. Tonight, 25 pounds overweight. I don't see anything other than a tired guy struggling play by play, by play to make anything happen, tripping over people. The, the one thing, Charles, that I see more than anything at all is I don't see any explosion. I don't see the athletic ability. I see a guy struggling with his quickness, and this was a guy that was supposed to be a top 10 pick heading into the senior year. A high school tailback who was terrific at pursuit. Ulrich pursued by Ortiz and then by Roach. And to kind of follow through with Tommy Blake, I'm hoping that Tommy Blake can get back to the player he was. He's gone through some difficult things off the field. He took some time away from the team trying to get his head on straight. He gained close to 50 pounds when he was away from the team. Quick snap there at the line of scrimmage. And Tommy Blake's the kind of talent that you see, hate to see wasted, Charles. So I'm hoping that over time, he can get everything back together, get his weight back down to 255, and show the NFL scouts what kind of explosive athlete he really is. And he has one of those weaknesses that I think the three of us probably share. Twinkies? Mar marble slab creamery. Oh, yeah. Old stone creamery. It did, yeah. He said, he said the ice cream, got him. <laughs> I know how he feels. Third down four for Keenum. Option. Broke that one tackle to keep the play alive, and he's still short of the first down near midfield. But this again, remember, this is Houston. So most people would think, okay, punting situation, 10-10 game, a little bit shy of, of midfield. Not necessarily with Houston. And even if they start to come out with people, you better leave your defense out there and play punt safe. Right. And make sure that the ball is actually kicked. Now, the very first possession of the game, they're three yards further upfield from where they went for it and didn't make it. Now, Turner, the putter, is on the, on the field there, number 80. And Charles, you're correct. It's punt safe. It's got to be. And Houston is not used to having 10 points on the board midway through the third quarter. Really, right now, if you look at the scoreboard, this is a TCU-type game at 10-10. This is what they'd rather have. Houston wants this thing. Delay of game on uh, Houston. Uh, Houston wants this thing blown up into the 30s, well, it's, the it's 40s. That basketball analogy That's what we they talked about. We're, right. we're getting the four corners offense now. The old Dean, you know, the, the Dean ball right. back at North Carolina. To, TCU has slowed the game down. The number of possessions to Houston has been minimized. Yeah, forced by Slam Majama. That's what they want <laughs> right here in Houston. That's, that's, right. that's what they want. That's right. Al Waddell, yeah. that's the defense coordinator. What's your number one job as a coordinator? Get the ball Get back off so quickly. Yep. Well, he launched that one, didn't he? Bonner's going to watch it go over his head into the end zone. He's got a live foot, man. He really does. That's because he's a chunky putter. <laughs> 57 yards, touchback. 10-10, Frogs ball. <laughs> well, sure they won, but Mancini and the Jets could have done a better job in the red zone today. Get NFL Mobile only from Sprint on the all-new Motorola Razr 2. Sharper than ever. Hello, Moto. What's behind the grill is what matters most. Grade. 
didn't get what you wanted for Christmas. He doesn't like it. No, no, I, what do I do with it? That's... Get amazing savings on home appliances at Sears. Starting the day after Christmas, buy one, get 10% cash back. Buy two, get 15% cash back. Buy three or more and get 20% cash back on any home appliance over $3.99. Plus, get 12 months no interest, no payments with your Sears card. Or get free delivery in Holloway on any home appliance over $3.99. Through Saturday, January 5th, it's your chance to get what you want. Sears. I'm Jeff Fisher, and you're watching NFL Network. Welcome back to the Texas Bowl presented by Radio Shack. No bull. <laughs> That's right outside Reliant Stadium. This is right inside Reliant Stadium. And Andy Dalton is quarterback TCU the whole way. And he's got a man at the 30 yard line. He's got a nice play to Urban Dickerson the first catch of the night for one of the for the Frogs leading receiver. Let's go down to the sideline to Kimberly Jones. Hey guys there's a very proud Cougar watching in Dallas and that is Cowboys coach Wade Phillips. He calls the University of Houston very near and dear to my heart. He, he says his father coached there. I played and coached there. Our family still has many ties with Houston. I'll get back to you after the play. All right we want to see more of that picture of Wade. I'll guarantee you. <laughs> <laughs> this is Christian. Picking up about four on first down. What did Wade say, Kim? Wade talked about the great memories he has here in Houston. He said, we follow the Cougars team closely, and we'll be watching the game tonight. And guys, why wouldn't he? His Cowboys at the top seed, the NFC locked up, as you know very well, Brad. Yeah, and honestly, you know what? You can see Bump Phillips oh, in that face, can't you? The face, wow. the haircut. Wow. But how about the socks? <laughs> I, mean, I was digging the socks. They even had UH on the socks, just in case you didn't know. He is a proud Cougar now, I will tell you that. Well, he should be. This program's really on the uprise, and Kevin Sullivan's taking over a nice, nice group. Dalton a little long down the field for Marcus Brock. Kento Williams in coverage, and it'll be third down and six. Marcus Brock's a pretty neat story, guys. I mean, you look at what he's done. He's a young man was adopted from Haiti by family here in Texas, raised him and his sister. He learns to play football here. His name is Francois. That's now his middle name. I had a chance to talk with him before the ball game. What a terrific young man. Great kid. Third down. TCU just two of nine on third down tonight. Oh, what a good throw that was. Ooh, what a big hit that was. The catch made by Walter Bryant. And Dalton put that on a rope. And the hit made by Broderick Bean. And that was a two-man coverage, meaning two deep safeties splitting half the field. And the underneath coverage was man-to-man. -man. He got away from number five, the drop in, Ernest Miller. Dalton puts it on him. And here comes the big hit by Bean. Texas A&M fans recognize the name Bean. Bubba? Bubba Bean. Bubba Bean? Yes. Bubba Bean. He is a cousin of Bubba Bean, the former running back there in the Atlanta Falcons. There's a little option shovel. You don't see too many of those back into the middle to watch. What do you think of that, Mike, when you option it one way and shovel it back into the middle? That's part of what they do. And you can watch them on tape. And what they're trying to do is get everybody flowing hard to option, which they've run five or six times already, and then deal it back underneath. And it's truly an option for Dalton. He can go either way with that pitch. Really good backside support to stop that play. They really make you work on defense and preparation. TCU does with all the different formations and alignments that they present. Second and seven. Dickerson again. Good hesitation. Allowed Urban Dickerson to get the first down. I mean, really, I don't think they threw at him in the first half, did they? No, not that I remember, but he's a he's a pretty neat target to throw to when you look at his size. He's 6'1", 200. He's a strong physical receiver. He's a graduate student. Graduated in May. Came back to play an extra year of football. And his teammates call him Coop. I don't know if you guys ever Hanging saw him. with Mr. Right, Cooper. Mr. Cooper, right? right. Mark yep. Curry, the star of that, they say he bears a strong facial resemblance to Coop. First down and 10 at the 36 of Houston. 10 10 game, late third. Zero coverage, no free safety. You can make a play. Nope. Christian cut the route off, and Dalton, who was getting a little pressure, thought that thing was going deeper. What I, there was no free safety in the hole. It was pure man with a blitz coming. And I think what happened there was Dalton said, hey, 
take it all the way. There's no help deep. Take it deep. I'm throwing it to you. And the receiver, Christian, who remembers, splitting his time between running back and wide receiver, broke the route off. Yeah, he saw the man coverage. As you said, no free safety, zero coverage. He had four verticals running upfield. And just what you thought, as I said, Mike, he thought Christian would take all the way to the end zone. He was throwing it up there to give him a chance. Dalton had hit seven in a row before that one. Good block by Watts, the tailback. And uh, that looked like it might have been a little bit of a busted play. I think it was pure run. Do you really? Yeah, I, I, I feel like they should rethink run. that play. <laughs> I, I, I may be wrong. You know, it could have been a bust, but watch how he takes the ball. One step, go. No, it's, it's a pure run, I believe. It was zero coverage again. And if... if if you're a quarterback and you know it's zero coverage, you want to throw the football. Right. That's a chance to make a play. They're blitzing heavy. Houston, when they get you in second and third long, their huge tendency is to bring the house on the on the and either to play zone behind or play zero coverage behind. The last two have been zero coverage. And Phillip Hunt, number 53, is to the top of your screen. He's their best pass rusher. Cooper yeah. fans making their most noise of the night. Is that a catch? What a play that is for Jimmy Young. Incomplete. Uh, he's been so close two or three times tonight. The headlinesman came up and said he was out of bounds. Remember, in college football, you've got to get one foot down, even if the defender's pushing you out. Young comes back to the ball. Now you've got to get a foot down. Good job by the defender. Oh, he did get he a, got a foot down. The left foot is down. Now... Take your time if you're TCU and hope that they get looks at this. Because watch how he comes down. Mike, you nailed it. See, there's the catch. Left foot there's right the there. Foot. And he's got the ball, it looks like. And as long and as he's got control of the football, which it looks like he has without a problem, that's a catch. And now they, I believe they are reviewing it. Yeah, you got. that's got to be reviewed. And again, in the NCAA, Except for, as Mike told you earlier in the game, except for one permissible challenge per game from the bench, everything comes from the booth upstairs. And they will, the, the replay judge is Verl Sell on this Big Ten crew. And he will decide whether this play is going to be reviewed. Not Jimmy Young. Throw the flag, throw the flag, throw the flag. Now, players often get emotional, and we're talking about a redshirt freshman. However, he was looking up at the board. He saw the left foot come down, and right away went to his head coach. Throw the flag. And unlike in the NFL, when you see the referee go under the hood, and the referee is looking at the play, and the referee is deciding whether the play was good or bad, this time, the referee, David Whitvote, is on the sideline on headsets listening to Verl Sell, who is making that decision up in the booth. To me, that's a no-brainer. I don't know what, what if you guys saw anything. I mean, that ought to be think decided very, very long. quickly. I don't think it should take very long. I think it's going to go down as a catch. The only thing we didn't get to see was whether the ball was moving. And, and, and that's what we'll check out right now. But I think that he had this thing he had firmly it the whole in way. his grasp. That's a, that's a catch. A great job by Jimmy Young getting the foot down inbounds. It's a heck of a throw getting drilled also by Dalton. See, and Mike, you made the point before. There's no gray area in college football. In pro football, there's a gray area. If they, if they feel like you're, you could have come down inbounds, but you were pushed out, they can award the catch. I like the college rule better. It's it either, makes it either easy. clean or it's not. Yeah, in the NFL, as you just said, Charles, judgment call. It becomes a pure judgment call, and that's a difficult thing. In college, they say you got to get a foot down. End of story. The right, right now, if you are, where was the mark? There was the question. Yeah, uh, where oh, did it was he come the first down? down. After review, the ruling on the field is reversed. The receiver caught the ball, was inbounds with his left foot prior to being out of bounds. The ball will be placed at the 23-yard line, first down. Good camera work there, guys. That was clean and easy. Yeah, our guys were all over that one. Great job picking it up. 15 yards on the pass to number 88, Jimmy Young. Coaches talked about his upside. Remember, a six foot one, 200 pound red shirt freshman. They talked about his ability to run with the football after the catch. They think he's going to be a huge wide receiver for them in the next three years. Now, first and 10 at the Houston 23. Tie game, last minute of the third quarter. Dalton on a quarterback draw. 
This young fellow from Katy, Texas, has had a really nice night for TCU, and he said he came to TCU after watching them play in the Houston Bowl two years ago. Well, they gave, they, he saw practice here. He had already kind of bought, he wanted to go to TCU. That solidified it for him. Spent some time around the team, and now here he is back in Houston, now leading the ball club. That's why Gary Patterson and his staff wanted to be here for recruiting. And they've got a bunch of players out of Houston that they count on. And this is obviously a hotbed in a fertile recruiting area. But think about this. You brought it up earlier, Brad. Normally, this is a two-quarterback system, meaning Marcus Jackson usually gets a series or two each half. He hasn't gotten a single snap in no. this ball game. And on the other side, neither has Blake Joseph. And we'll have no more snaps in the third quarter. We thought we'd have a good, close, competitive game. And looky here. The Texas Bowl presented by Radio Shack is tied going to the fourth quarter. We'll be right back with the Cougars and the Horn Frogs 10-10. Houston. Houston. Houston is one of the world's great cities. A city of many people. And cultures. And cuisines. From all over the world. Russia. Ethiopia. Iran. China. Tonga. Turkey. Turkey. Pakistan. Bangladesh. Sudan. Japan. The Netherlands. And Texas. We are proud of our heritage. We celebrate diversity. Out of many. Out of many. Out of many. We are one. Houston is home to four million people. Speaking over a hundred languages. Houston is my dad. Houston, Benjamin. Houston, Houston, Houston is my casa. Houston is my home. We are honored to welcome all the peoples of the world. All the people of the world. My allergies make it hard to work, but I can't take an allergy medicine that puts my head in a fog. That's why I'm cleared and clear out here and in here too. Whether it's dust, mold, or Sam here, Claritin relieves all my worst indoor allergy symptoms for 24 hours. I sneeze, this guy could lose his nose. Only Claritin is proven to make me alert and focused. And Claritin won't make me drowsy like other allergy medicines can. For me, a sharp mind's more important than a sharp chisel. Non-drowsy Claritin. Live Claritin clear, indoors and out. Saturday night, Tom Brady and the undefeated Patriots put perfection on the line against the playoff hungry Giants. It's one for the record books. Patriots, Giants, Saturday night at 8, live on NFL Network. City Hall, downtown Houston, as we welcome you back to the Texas Bowl, presented by Radio Shack. Don't forget NFL Total Access has the latest news and information from around the league, featuring exclusive team cam access on NFL Total Access, Monday through Saturday at 7 Eastern, and it's only on NFL Network. Now, we talked about TCU not wanting to put too much on the quarterback. Seems to me on the important plays, they've gone to Andy Dalton in this game. And it's third down, and Dalton with a bootleg, and he's got his tight end, Frosh. A first down to the eighth for Evan Frosch, a redshirt freshman from Midland, and that leads me to wonder if he'll next year have to change his name to Evan Soft. <laughs> Better ask his mom. And Charles, I think you hit it on the head more and more as this game progresses to putting it in Dalton's hands. Key third down situation, play action, nice route progression, the underneath tight end wide open, he gets the ball out of his hands. We've seen several quarterback draws, we've seen option, We've seen a lot of empty sets because Turner's out of the game. That was the fifth first down of the drive. Now this is 13 plays. This is Watts to the goal line. Touchdown, TCU. Justin Watts, just in time. That's good stuff. He only had 45 carries on the entire season heading into tonight. Huge moment for the young man. The Purple Faithful who have come down from Fort Worth celebrating. A 
as Chris Manfredini tries to add the extra point. TCU's first lead of the night. Flag on the extra point. That's an 80-yard possession in 13 plays. Took almost five minutes. And an excellent job by the offensive line also in that series. And Mr. Whitmote, the penalty would be what, sir? Be administered on the kickoff, I'll bet, for roughing the kicker. Yep. Running into the kicker on the defense. Penalty is declined. The extra point is good. There is no carryover. Okay. But there is a new score. And thanks to Justin Watts, number 32, who scored only one touchdown during the regular season. TCU leads 17-10. Visa makes it easier to get ready for game day. Life takes Visa. eBay, shop victoriously. Three years of law school teach you a lot. For him, it's confidence. For me, it's pride. Go to ncaastudent.org to find out how your child could become one of the many student athletes who go pro in something other than sports. The Inside Bowl on NFL Network. The electric Cowboys offense looks to heat up the desert when they square off with the Hoosiers. The Inside Ball, Monday at 6 on NFL Network. I'm Brad Childress, and you're watching NFL Network. Welcome back to the Texas Bowl, presented by Radio Shack. That young man, Justin Watts, from Center, Texas, capping off a long drive and putting his team in front for the first time tonight, 17-10 in the fourth quarter. He's another example of the next man up mentality you have to have as a player. He's a utility guy, bouncing between no pullback yep. and running back, tailback, and now he's gotten an opportunity. He's played quite well tonight. Well, again, they're going to try to keep the ball out of the speedster's hands, but it's Allridge. It's Allridge. Yeah, that's what they have not been able to get done on offense. Anthony Ulrich finally, finally, Mike, is able to spring loose. This is a guy that's had two games over 200 yards. He's had 1,568 yards on the season. Tonight, 12 carries for three yards. It's been a brutally difficult night for him, and I credit the TCU defense, especially the front four, for having gap discipline, and I love the way the linebackers are pressing the line of scrimmage. Again, when you have a lateral run offense, you can't go laterally as a linebacker. You've got to press the line of scrimmage. Now look at those numbers. Two yards rushing tonight, but he had 34 on the kickoff return, and Keenum overshooting Jerron Harvey. Oh, boy. But there is a flag oh boy. way down the field. Back Judge Scott Buchanan threw the, threw the laundry on the field. Be interested to see what the call is. I think if, if anything, it's got to be a hold. It won't be pass interference. No. I think it'd have to be a hold if that's what he saw. During the play, holding defense number four. Wow. Ten yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Stephen Coleman, a junior safety called for the hold. Now wasn't Stephen Coleman a starter for much of the year? Stephen Coleman was a starter and he was playing some corner and they were giving up some deep balls and TC said we cannot get beat with the ball over our head. They moved him to the bench. They moved Hodge up into the safety spot. That's when things got better. Nice job running the alley. Brian Bonner ran the alley made a great play. I love seeing a safety read his keys 
run the alley, and make him play like that. That's huge. Here, here he is. This is running the alley. That's just fantastic, Charles. No hesitation. Read the key, ran the alley, and made the short tackle. And what did Coach Patterson say? Tackle through the leg. Yep, that was a great inside-out tackle. Didn't allow the cutback. Now, a lot of the spread offense teams you see around the country do this, what Houston just did. They come to the line. They look like they're going to snap the ball. Then they all back off. And the quarterback turns to the bench and gets the play. Second and nine. Seabass had a good block at left tackle to let that ball go out to Donnie Avery and set up third and three. You know, it was interesting talking to Avery at practice yesterday. He's the one guy in this game that's going to be at the Senior Bowl that we're covering later in January. He told me he was going to run 4-2-5 or better. I told him I've never in my life at any level, high school, college, anywhere, I've never ever seen a guy time it better than 4-3-0, although urban legend has Deion Sanders. Our Deion the Sanders, combine. yes. But, so we have a little dinner bet at the Combine, and he reiterated, he came right up to me before the game, he said, you're going to owe me dinner. <laughs> and I think they're setting him up for a little deep route here, Charles, with a couple of hitches so far. Down there by himself. Third and three option. Keenum. Oh, what's this big thing I ran into? Tommy Blake. <laughs> Keenum turned back around. He wasn't expecting Tommy Blake to be waiting for it. And that's not the 255-pound version of Tommy Blake. That's the 275. And he just enveloped Case Keenum when he tried to cut back. See, Chase Ortiz, number 93. That's what's going to help him, Mike, in evaluation, isn't it? The ability to be able to play on his feet as well as with his hand in the ground. We're talking about Chase Ortiz. He's only 6'3", 255. He's not going to be a hand-down defense man in the NFL. If Chase Ortiz has a chance to make it as a starter in the NFL, it's going to have to be with his hand up and an ability to drop in space. So Turner will punt. Looking for the corner. Can he find the corner? Catch the ball. Oh, Catch man. the ball. Oh my, Bonner was standing right there. No, I'm not even talking about Bonner, number Bonner. 24. Oh yeah, Monroe, catch the football. Ball's dead where you catch it. That was it. a great punt. It's a perfect punt. Catch the ball, Mr. Monroe. In the NFL, the biggest games are decided by the smallest details. That's why Samsung imagined an LCD HD TV with 120 hertz, a true black screen, and twice the frames per second for exceptional motion clarity. We got it. Challenging. So you won't have to wait for further review to start the celebration. The decision is clear. Samsung, the official HD TV of the NFL. Don't miss the essential Sunday morning NFL update. Get up to speed with the official injury reports, starting lineups, and everything you need to know for your fantasy team. Sunday news update presented by Verizon Wireless at 11.45 a.m. on NFL Network. Are the credit card bills closing in on you? Sick and tired of the constant struggle just to stay afloat? Shouldn't this be the year you get a fresh start? Well, now you can settle your debts with dignity and without bankruptcy. Get the professional help of the Debt Reduction Law Center and get a fresh start. I just sign up. They do all the real work. Better than consolidation or credit counseling, the Debt Reduction Law Center uses the power of legal professionals to settle your debts. The fact is, it's you versus them. But what's new is, you don't have to face us alone. We can help. We'll get you an affordable monthly payment. And settle your debt so you'll have hundreds more each month. You really should call if you have over 10 grand in debt. Don't put this off. Legal settlement can get you fast, easy debt resolution and let you get back to the important things in life. Make the call stop. Settle your debts and move on to a better life. For a free consultation, call 800-478-0471. Call now. NFL Network presents Saturday Night Football. And it's your place to see New England in prime time. The Patriots invade the Big Apple to close out the regular season with the Giants in an interconference battle. The run to the playoffs is on. NFL Network, your home for football 24-7, all year long. Saturday Night Football, Patriots, Giants. Welcome back to the Texas Bowl presented by Radio Shack. TCU up seven here in the, in the second half. And look at this play, a perfect punt. 
that goes to waste because Tim Monroe, turn around, catch the ball. Oh, man. The punt returner, Brian Bonner, was not making a play, and look at what happens, Mike. <laughs> the coach is great. Don't worry about it, son. It's okay. Now watch when he gets past them. Are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> Chase Turner could not have punted that any better. Now Dalton, who can't throw it much better, to the 50-yard line, and the catch is made by Irvin Dickerson. If he had thrown it a little deeper, Dickerson's still running. What a nice adjustment by Dickerson, huh? Really nice. Play action out of the shoot here. Nice job, ball in the air. It gets over the head, I believe, of Simon. He's got his yeah. shirt tucked yes, Harry, up under. It was Harry Simon, number 12. He's the corner, typically. Yep, there he is. Oh, boy, if he could have let him a little more, it's gone. But what a nice adjustment by Dickerson because he's running full speed up the field, right, guys? And then he has to turn back around and make the play on the ball. 32 yards on that one, first down. Watch. First down, a gain of 12 to the 36. Nice job by the left side of the line of scrimmage at TCU, collapsing it down, allowing him to bounce it. Watch Newhouse, the left side. Marshall Newhouse. There's the seal block right there, the bounce. They get outside of number 91, Tate Stewart. I sense that the offensive line of TCU is taking over the football game. Great drive the last time. Stop them on defense, and here they come again. Nice block from Christian. Really nice move by Walter Bryant. And it all happens because Christian makes that block on the edge. And because Brinkley doesn't make the open field tackle and make it a seven-yard play instead of a, what was it, Brad? We're getting there. <laughs> okay, here's the nice job to cut block. Now, Bryant's got the football. you got to tackle him in the open field. 22. Turned into a 22-yard gain, and Brandon Brinkley threw a shoe on that play. The move was so nice. From the 16, Christian hit in the mouth, and then rolls right off that inside the 10. Let's go down to Kimberly Jones. Charles, you had it right a couple plays ago. The momentum in this game has completely swung. The TCU defenders are jumping around. Brian Bonner exhorting his teammates, Chase Ortiz, at the sideline, rooting them on. This is a completely different TCU sideline. It looks like Andy Dalton got a dose of confidence at halftime. I think they're wearing them down. Yeah, Kim, I think you're right. Yeah. Kim, he's been building that confidence for the last few games, and it's really started to flourish here in this bowl. Second down and three. Watts. Going to have a first and goal just outside the five. Harry Simon makes the tackle. TCU had ten first downs in the first half. They have seven in this one. This, this is real Oh, sorry. Back, back it up. They've got ten in this half. They only had seven, seven in the first, in the first half. half. Wow. If I would just read what the man wrote, it would Listen, be a lot better. I'll tell you what. I'm going to tell you guys right now. Gary Patterson can come to my house and pep talk my kids anytime. <laughs> All right? Because what he does works. Let me tell you another thing. TCU is fortunate to have him as their head coach. He can coach anywhere in the country. There, there's that tight set with big people again. Now they flex it out. Last time you got Dalton on a run play with it, remember? Yep. This time they got a flinch in the interior line. It was first and goal at the six. False start. Offense. Number 70, five yards. Marshall Newhouse. The remains first. Well, that just drives coaches crazy, doesn't it, guys? You get up there, you, you've gone through all this stuff. The discipline of shifting, changing formations, changing alignments has to translate to everyone. Not just the receivers and the backs getting, getting to where they need to be, but the offensive line holding in there in order to run the play. And you know what, Charles, we had coffee this morning with Gary Patterson, and he commented how last year they didn't have as much time to practice before the ball game. They played flawlessly. <laughs> Tonight they've had a lot of practice, and they've had a ton of penalties. Beverage dropper. <laughs> Dalton on the roll. Fred, you should have been there. It was good coffee. I bet it was. <laughs> I bet it was. I didn't get a call. But last last year, I think the, I think it was 17 days from their last game yeah. to the bowl game. But it was cut even shorter because they're not allowed to practice during finals. finals right. So they they were only able to go about six or seven days total. This year they had 34 days 
from their last game at San Diego State until this evening. Wow, that's a that really is a long. A little time. bit different. Yeah, and no one. Heavy set. Second and goal. That's Dickerson on an inside handoff. They lined him up. A wide receiver of the running back. Now it'll be third down and goal. TCU never led in this game until the fourth quarter. When they scored to go ahead 17 to 10, there's Gary Patterson. And Mike, what you said about him being able to coach anywhere in the country is, no is so true that the, the people in Fort Worth are always glad when an opening gets filled. Yeah, they, they, they really exhale when that happens. I'm really surprised Christian's not on the field. But again, I feel like Dalton will have a big hand in this play. It's third down and goal. Dalton. No receiver on that side. Flag is down. Take a hold. The touchdown to Shea Reagan, the tight end, but it's coming back, holding TCU. See if they say 61, Marcus Cannon. Who, me? Holding. Offense. Number 61. That's the third offensive holding call on the right tackle tonight. And two from Richmond. Now Cannon. I'll tell you two things about this play. First, banjo coverage on the right side. That means an in and out coverage. They pass off the pick play. Great job. Then secondly, the obvious hold. What did we say all night long about TCU's offense? The only person group really stopping TCU is TCU. I give Houston a ton of credit. But TCU's penalties have killed them all night long. If you're Houston now and Alan Waddell on defense, do you heat them up? Do you go after Dalton or do you play coverage here, Mike? They've been a heat them up team all year long in these kind of situations. And on third down and goal, they didn't need to blitz for Phillip Hunt to get his second sack of the night. Nice tackle for loss there for Phillip Hunt who leads Conference USA in sacks and tackles for loss yep. this season. See the explosion. That's why I like the kid. He's a leverage player. He comes out. He's only 6'2", 250 pounds. Look how low and hard he comes out. He beats the block of Montgomery. Not even a contest. You got to Penetration is the worst thing you can allow in any kind of situation, but especially the red zone. His, his body type reminds me of Chuck Darby, who played with Tampa Bay mm -hmm. a little bit. This is a 36-yard try for Manfredini. He was 10 of 11 in the 30s. Limping, but good. And a big 36-yard field goal for TCU with only half the fourth quarter left. And the Horned Frogs now two scores up, leading the Houston Cougars 20 to 10 in the second annual Texas Bowl. took off with all your cold refreshing cores like who do they think they are they are who we thought they were they are who you thought they were well who do you think they were they are who we thought they were okay well if you knew who they were why didn't you stop them we let them off the hook frost brew cores light official beer sponsor of the nfl coach those guys that took your cores light they went that way those guys are toast favorite team home with Glidden Team Colors Paint, the true colors of true fans. Team Colors Paint, exclusively from Glidden and only at the Home Depot. Every year about this time, something magical happens. The red tags come out for the Buick Pontiac GMC Red Tag Event. Look for the red tag and your chance to get the best price of the season on 2008 Buick Pontiac and GMC models. And the price on that tag is the price you pay. During the red tag event, choose 2,000 total cash back or 1.9 APR financing for 60 months on 2008 GMC Sierra Crew Cab. Hurry, the red tag event ends January 2nd. See your Buick Pontiac GMC dealer today. If you didn't watch NFL game day last Sunday night, here's what you missed. I got a feeling those starters are going to be in there for the entire game. They have balance offensively, defensively. Don't miss NFL game day, Sunday night at 1130, only on NFL Network. 
a question left for NFL fans. Will the Patriots be perfect? Well, tomorrow night, NFL Network presents the Patriots and the Giants in a season-ending matchup. Patriots-Giants live on NFL Network. It's tomorrow night at 8 Eastern. And our Mike Mayock, I believe, had a nice sit-down with the head coach of the Patriots, Bill Belichick, that will run. Uh, doesn't that run, I believe, be in our pregame coverage? And you know what, Charles? I mean, people don't get to see Bill Belichick's personality. He doesn't allow it too often, right. but, but he relaxed. We have fun. He's really one of the most brilliant people I've ever met. He's a very interesting guy. This kickoff only to the 25-yard line after the tight end returns it again. And I, I just don't know why you want to give up field position. The Cougars need two scores. They are 65 yards away. Half the fourth quarter to go. Going over and over? It's not just you. Stopping and starting? Going urgently? You're not alone. Lots of guys experience male urinary symptoms due to BPH, also known as an enlarged prostate. But for many guys, prescription Flomax may relieve urinary symptoms due to BPH in one week. And who doesn't want to spend less time in the bathroom? Only your doctor can tell if you have BPH, not prostate cancer. Common side effects of Flomax are runny nose, dizziness, and decrease in semen. Upon standing, a sudden drop in blood pressure may occur, rarely resulting in fainting. So when starting Flomax, avoid situations where injury could result. If considering cataract surgery, tell your eye surgeon you've taken Flomax. Do what millions of guys have already done. Ask your doctor about Flomax and call 877-4-FLOMAX for a free one-week trial. Why wait? Join the crowd. Flomax could make a difference in one week. When well, the New England Patriots go for a perfect season live on NFL Network. What started as a dream is now on the threshold of reality. The genius coach, the golden boy quarterback, poised to lay claim as the greatest football team ever. Yeah, pretty much. Man, I hope the Giants win. If you're already a dynasty, what comes after that? The perfect season is on the line. Patriots Giants Saturday at 8 on NFL Network. I'm Romeo Cornell, and you're watching NFL Network. Welcome back to the Texas Bowl presented by Radio Shack. So I, I, I spent all that time painting my face for this. <laughs> yeah, but what's it spelled? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> and, and that's exactly what it's been for the key components of the Houston offense. Uh-uh. Keenum, going to keep this. So the head fake gets an eight. We thought we started at the beginning of the game, Charles told us. It's Avery and it's Aldridge. Yeah, and, and, and here they are with... Bupkis. And they'd like to, you know, before the game, we might as well have said they'd like to change the area code here to 222. Right. Avery with number two and right. Aldridge with 22. But right now, I believe the Aldridge is pretty frustrated. Has been able to run the ball very well, just got missed on a pass route. He thought he was open. And, and what I think is Case Keenum now has to be more aware of trying to get the ball down the field vertically and, and less inclined to run the football. Buy time with your legs, but get it down the field. And I've seen Allridge and Avery open, but no patience sometimes from the quarterback. Now they're, they are uh, going a little quicker. They, they are frequently without a huddle, but now they're going hurry up. There's Allridge. Yeah. There it is. There's Allridge. Yeah. Spread them wide. The, the line splits there were huge. Spread them out. Run inside. Make somebody miss. Look at the line splits. Guard tackle, where he goes, the cutback. Beats the defensive end, beats the safety. Beat the umpire. <laughs> nice talk tackle by Stephen Hodge, who I think has had a real good game tackling. If he doesn't make that play there, he's still running. Right. 22 yards for number 22. And they do need to score in a hurry, but things are not all that bleak. Brian Bonner. Yeah, Beautiful that's, play. That's fast on fast. That, what, did, what did we say earlier about running the alley, Charles? Inside out leverage. Don't allow the cutback. Don't let the speed intimidate you. Brian Bonner closed the gap so well inside that when Aldridge tried to give him that little hesitation, there's nothing there. There was no cutback. And Coach Patterson told him all week, tackle through their legs. Don't take the hesitation through their legs. 
I'm really liking the way the safeties of this team make plays close to the line of scrimmage. And this is the way Gary Patterson's teams play defense. Second down, about seven. That'll be in a hurry, and that one's broken up. A little miscommunication right there. It was intended for McDaniel, who was running down the field blocking. Gone back under center a lot on this drive, Case Keenum. More under center, less of the shotgun in this series. Now, it, this is interesting here. That's Waddell, the defensive coordinator on the right, talking to Thurman, who's involved, obviously, trying to get plays called. I think he's talking to him about time also. Oh, yeah. About at what point do you have to start taking time now so we're going to have to do, you know, have to deal with him on defense. Third down. Seven. Oh, boy. Oh, third and 12. Well, I was going to ask you if you would. Uh... False start. Offense, number 64. Five yards. The down remains third. Michael Bless, who they think is really their steadiest offensive lineman, the junior right guard. And I was going to ask you guys, if they're 10 points behind, you got to score twice. Would you think about kicking your field goal here? But now, now the, the field position is a little more problematic. Well, well, this play will determine right. what they're going to want to do with that. How much it would take to get the fourth down. It comes down to down and distance exactly. and probability versus how long the field goal is. Now look, you got Avery on the weak side. You one on one. You gotta think you gotta strip. try that, don't you? Yep. That's where he wants to come. Pass was just too had tough. It. He had him open. And he had it because again, Priest had to respect the speed. There was a three to four yard cushion. The ball was not delivered. Watch, Priest has got to respect the speed. Shuffle, shuffle, break out. That's good coverage. You got to put it on him. That's on the quarterback right there, missing a throw that he can make. Now, this is interesting. The line of scrimmage is the 32. They've got the field goal team out to try a 48 yarder. And TJ Lawrence's season high is 46. And remember, longer kicks, you kick lower because you have to drive them. And, and he's got two blocks this year. Exactly. But it's fourth and 12, which is why they figure the, the odds are better with this. Well, he got enough distance. He nailed it. Oh, oh, he pushed blocked. it off to the right. Wow. He could have kicked it distance from 60 yards. But that's a big miss because they still are two scores down, and now there are under six minutes remaining. And the hard part for the Houston defense is they played their hearts out this whole ball game. The last two or three drives, they really have not stopped TCU. This is hit pretty well. No, guys. he hit it well. No question about I mean, it. Oh, he, he crushed the wide. ball. Chris Thurman, the interim head coach, trying to give it a little, little yeah, English. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, man. Man, all of that, it comes down to my kicker. Oh, boy. Gary Patterson, there's Dick Bumpus, the defensive coordinator in the background. Well, the Frogs go from the 30. Two. They're going to have to start using some timeouts here. We're under six minutes. It's a two-score game. Ryan Christians had a very busy night. Sophomore from Alito, Texas. And he is really, you guys talked about it earlier, but he's really stepped up when they needed him to step up because they're just so thin at that position. He really has played a nice game tonight. And the thing that's impressed me most about his running ability is that he runs with good pad level, unlike a lot of wide receivers who tend to run a little bit higher because they're used to open spaces. Nice catch. That's a terrific catch by Bart Johnson. It wasn't a great throw. And look at him fight for a first down. <laughs> he better fight to stay in bounds. And he, and he got that done. <laughs> That's right. Now, he's an interesting kid. Think about this. You're a redshirt freshman. You touched the ball five times <laughs> all season long. Three of them are for touchdowns. One of them on a punt, a block punt that Correct. he returned for a touchdown. Two of them touchdown catches. When you hear them talk about it, about him, right, you hear them say effort dedication well that's why he was the scout team mvp during his red shirt year i would add hands good hands good hands. that also that was well done by him first down chris Thurman's going to have to start calling timeouts after this play yeah we're under five minutes watch nice tackle got lubajowski and schwartz lubajowski is a guy who's normally very busy and we haven't called his name very much tonight he tends to play wide side of the field, tries to be kind of like a field linebacker. And when you get him out in space sometimes, it's hard to be a real factor in a game. 
Charles, I look at the clock ticking away. Do you, do yeah, that's why I was wondering about, about Alan Waddell talking to Chris Thurman. I think he was trying to talk to him about, okay, when do we start taking these timeouts in order to try and keep this thing going? I think yeah, I think he's there. I think they're at that stage. Oh yeah. It's Christian again, sticking his nose in. And it'll be third down and about three at the 48-yard line, and now we're under four minutes remaining. How about Blake Schluter right there, number 75, their center? He's really the leader of that offensive line. And Charles, you and I were kind of checking him out before the game. He squatted an ungodly 870 pounds. Oh, what? 70. In their night of champions last year. And it's not like he's a huge guy. He's 6'3", 273. He's not as wide as I would have expected a guy squatting. You know what, what does that tell you, though? Explosion. Explosion. He has some dedication in the weight room. It's a strong hipped athlete. Third down. Almost a wonderful catch by Walter Bryant. He could not hold on. The clock will stop with 3.23, and TCU will punt the ball away. So I'm Mike, they threw it. See, that's, that's what I was thinking. To me, Mike Schultz, the offensive coordinator, said to himself, I have enough confidence in my quarterback. I want to get the first down and keep the football. But I thought, run the ball there on third and three or so. If you don't get it, the clock continues to tick, or you force them to use a timeout. Rocky scores almost didn't get off the field at time. Watch the hitting people can't get away from it. It'll die at the 25, and Houston still needs two scores, and now they've only got 3.14 to go. 27-yard punt, but the time favors the Frogs. save with Geico Motorcycle Insurance. Enough for a night out with your special someone. Geico Motorcycle. Let's ride. The new Philips Norelco Architect. A shaver with flexible heads which pivot and rotate freely to give you a great shave even on the neck. Simplicity is making hard to reach places easy to reach. at your neighborhood radio shack. Do stuff. The Texas Bowl on NFL Network is brought to you by Radio Shack, where this holiday season, you don't just buy stuff, you do stuff. eBay, shop victoriously. It's a restaurant named the Aquarium in Houston. This is not the TCU defense. <laughs> Although you'd have a hard time convincing Case Keenum right now that it's not. That's a shark tank actually in the lobby of the aquarium next time you're in Houston, one of the many fine restaurants. All right, the Cougars have a lot of work to do. 314 left. There's Avery at the 40-yard line for a first down. You can have that all day, can't you? Yeah. I mean, we, we said that in the first half. That you could probably have that route just about any time you want it if you if you formation for it. Just because they have to respect the speed of Avery so much. And more so now with two scores on the line, you it, know. You can't give up a cheap win here. Priest is going to play even more loose. Yes. Nope. Anything in front, just make sure you tackle him or get him out of bounds. You got Avery and all Aldridge down here at the bottom now. And him ran into his own man. Job of finding Chris Gilbert, number eight, down at the 45-yard line for another first down. 
And I thought it was a nice job by Gilbert of finding the sideline. A lot of people say, well, in college, if you get a first down, the clock stops anyway. But when you get out of bounds, it allows you to huddle and take your time because the clock restarts when the ball's set and the chains are set after a first down. 3-0-2 left. Houston has to score twice. They're down by 10. Odd man front. Right now, they're only showing three. Three-man rush. And three was enough. Not so oh, fast. Not yet. Hold on. Keenum kept it alive. Special, right, Joel? That's one of the most impressive plays I've seen all season long. Because, watch, here's the late pursuit. That's Phillips, the linebacker. Is that Blake? Yep. Or Ortiz, Ortiz had him Ortiz. twice. Ortiz had him twice. And Gets look at his them. eyes Whoa. down the field. The Perry McDaniel, the two biggest plays of the night, both come on scramble. And Aykroyd, Case Keenum. Aykroyd, the all conference offensive tackle, was the one who blocked Ortiz the second time. Keenum underneath. Houston got a break when the tight end Mark Hafner fumbled it out of bounds. Good hit by Henson, who's a really athletic linebacker. Watched him practice the other day. One of those tightly wound, a little stiff in the hips, but very, very explosive athletes. They say he's their, their most athletic overall linebacker. Oh. You can see you can be an example of that right there. Making the read, coming up on the force with the big hit, knocks it free. Really explosive through the hips. I watched him in practice the other day. It looked like he had about a 40 inch vertical. Just messing around before practice catching the football. Now look, they hid in behind the offensive line, come out the trip. Watch out for number one, top of the screen. Isolated. Brian Bonner's cheating over. Allridge to the 10. They gave him the nine. Look who made the play again. Our guy, Henson. I mean, that was nice to be able to come in underneath the wash because you have so many bodies there. You think you're going to pick people off. Now 51 is Henson. It's third and six. I'm going to ask you guys this now. Do they have two plays or are they kicking their field goal? I, I think I think it's two plays here. I think Personally. you score. You gotta, you're close enough. It's, you got to score here. Touchdown. Okay. Third and six. Ten-point gap, 241 in the game. There goes all ridge into the left slot. From behind. Ortiz beat Aykroyd that time. Now, now you got to think about it. Now that you, now you change it. Now you kick it. See, now you I kick agree. It. I agree. I yeah, agree. That, that changed everything right there. Yep. Interesting. Ortiz, watch the hustle play. We talked about he's left a relentless side. pursuit guy. He got pushed past Keenum, but he kept the play alive, and this time he held on to it. And you know who the big help was? Pass Phil. Phil. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He pushed, we pushed, he collapsed the pocket back in the face of Keenum, and then Ortiz from the backside. And this is 32. <laughs> 32 for TJ Lawrence. That kick is good with a minute and 57 remaining to be played, and it now makes it a seven. Uh, a a one-score game at 20 to 16, and here is the kind of night. Uh, sorry, it's now seven, now 20 to 13, and here's the kind of night that Keenum is at for the Cougars. And we talked early on; he's the kind of kid that keeps plays alive. He'll take a lot of hits because of that, but that's all right because he's one of those tough kids. The coach's son. He'll run option. He'll keep a play alive. Charles will take some negative plays. But when you look back at his game today, what stood out to me is the two biggest plays of the night for their offense were both because of his creativity. His creativity and his toughness in the pocket. Yeah. I mean, Mike, one thing you always talk about is how clean are a quarterback's feet when he tries to step into a throw. Can he step into that kind of arc that goes around a quarterback in the pocket and be able to complete the throw? He hasn't had very many opportunities to do that tonight. He's got a lot of pressure in his face. Yet the only yet has he thrown an interception? No. I don't believe he has. And I mean, he's, you're been right. able, he's been able to make sure that the ball doesn't end up in the other team's hands despite the heavy pressure. Speaking of hands, there you go. Only a minute 57 remaining on each team has its full complement of three timeouts. 
But the time's prohibitive for Houston. They've just got an onside kick. Yeah, they can't count on the defense being able to stop them with this little time left. Here we go. That's a good one. That's with a good 10 one. yards, they might have gotten the ball. Great job by see the, catch? the hands guy. Brian Bonner, he might be my MVP. I mean, I love Dalton and what they Brian Bonner, wow. Punt returns, Brian Bonner filling the alleys. Brian Bonner making a huge play right there. I think he's my MVP. I go with him. And he is fearless because watch the hit he absorbs going up and leaving his body exposed for the football. Watch this. He knows it's coming. That's and he takes he takes a triple hit. And he juggled and it all the way down. Right, and he takes care of the football. Look, Look at, at this. the height he got on that. That's a great kick and a better play by Bonner. And no regard at all for the hit and for his body on that play. What? I'm, I'm going back and watch more tape of him. He's a senior <laughs> corner. That's senior safety that I need to evaluate. He's really, really impressive tonight. Not, not a big guy, but very fast and obviously very tough and aggressive. And timeout is taken by Houston. And Brian Bonner, number six, making big play after big play from Beeville, Texas. But remember back when it was 10 to 10, the turning point, the great catch by Jimmy Young, the redshirt freshman. Initially, the referees ruled it out of bounds. They came back, changed it, and then, of course, the touchdown run by number 32, just in time, Watts. And, and that's why I like replay. Get it right. Go ahead and get it right. Got an opportunity. My beef with replay is it takes so darn long sometimes. I love the momentum of the game. Let me tell you, I hate when the momentum's killed because somebody's under a hood for two, two and a half minutes. But it doesn't have to. I, I remember when the NFL first started with replay. They had a course, time limit. And, they, and, and it was really, it drug out forever. And Tech Schramm, the late Tech Schramm, who was the godfather of the thing, it drove him nuts. He said, just follow the rule the way we wrote it. Yep. Here's what. And Houston will go with a timeout again. They're second, and we can then remind you not to miss college bowl games on NFL Network. Indiana and Oklahoma State in the 2007 Insight Bowl. Live from Tempe, Arizona, Monday at 6 Eastern on the NFL Network. So, Mike, you'll be in the booth there, 6 Eastern in the desert in December. What is that, 4 o'clock? And if you like offense, you're going to love Indiana, these Oklahoma two teams. State. Let me tell you, Kellen Lewis for Indiana, the quarterback, throwing to James Hardy, all six feet, seven inches of him in Indiana. With Marcus Thigpen. With Marcus Thigpen, who, who could, and is also a great kick returner. Yeah. And Oklahoma State, Dantrell Savage, and Darius Bowman, Zach Robinson solidified the quarterback position. Yeah. It's the defensive side of the football. It's a little dicey. It yeah. won't, but, there's one but problem. it's going to be fun to watch. But there's one problem. I just asked what time is it in the desert, and Mayock's eyes crossed. And, you know, I'm not sure. Listen, we, you all talk, Mayock you knows. Now. All Mayock knows is, is when the kicker kicks it in the air, I'm talking there. football. And he's going to be there. That's all that matters. And now remains third. I got a producer that tells me what time to be here. They'll send a car and you'll be there. Okay, very good. I just want to make sure. He will be there. When I turn my TV on, I want to make sure I hear your voice. So we had a five-yard penalty against TCU. Now making it third in about 12. But I, don't, I still don't believe the ball is going to be in the air here, do you? They've had a history of being a little bit aggressive in, in fourth quarters of games with leads this year, but if I'm if, making this call, are you kidding me? Now I know they trust Andy Dalton, but if he does throw the ball here, I like quarterback swing, draw. Right. Swing, screen, quarterback draw. draw. Yep. Oh, now. Uh, they, and they weren't going to get the play run, so Houston's only got one timeout. And, 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 you, you do, you'd have to be, it's a seven point game. You'd have to be shocked if the ball went in the air. It, it, I would be do. shocked. Yeah. And if you're going to do it, you better throw something pretty safe. But they put it up there a series ago. Remember here? Yeah. Paul? No, it, the trust in Andy Dalton has really, really come to the front tonight, hasn't it? Sure has. Dickerson with the catch. I mean, he's made all the plays. Yeah. Bryant on the sideline. With a miss. Game, good game 22 instead of 7. Tight end again, this time Frosh. Seven Frosh. Next year will be a soft. Is that what you said? <laughs> That's, That's what, what I Brad said. said. Brad. That's what I said. <laughs> but Charles, you're right. They put the ball in his hands, and you can see what he's done in the second half. And as the season progressed, you watch tape of this kid, he got more and more confident. He ran the ball better. He understood their option attack better. I hope they hand the football off. Yeah. I mean, it... Bang. 
Sure, she does. Hand it off to Annika Christian. He goes to the 40. Houston's going to have to use the last timeout with a minute 41. Now you're going to punt the ball away. I'm going to safe punt it. Right. Right over the corner. Right. So there's no return. Now, if you were the special teams coach at TCU, what you're telling your guys is, I don't care what happens, there better not be a second thud. The second thud's the killer, because that means ball's blocked. Right. Double, double thud means you, double lose, thud, you lose your scholarship. Double thud's a problem. Okay? <laughs> Big right. problem. Right. I remember, I remember I was on punt team in Tennessee, and we're playing Alabama, and Cornelius Bennett, the uh, great Cornelius Bennett, has lined up over me for four years. So I tried my best to be friends with him for sure. four years, because that's a big man. And they let, and we had a key play on punt. And I said, Corny, you coming? He said, what do you think? I'm throwing you out of the way. I'm blocking him. <laughs> and I got as low as I could, and I just literally tackled him. Oh, yeah. And said, hey, if they want to throw the flag, throw let him. Let him. He's not blocking. All right, only one thump. Single thump. Oh, he killed this one perfectly. And more to the point. The other guys in the white shirts got down there and didn't let it roll by him. My man Bones dropped it right in there. 6'4", 177. Bones is so skinny, he's got to run around in the shower to get wet. <laughs> and a great job in coverage by his yeah. guys this time, getting downfield. Who's that, 28? That's Colin Jones. He's made about three plays he's, in the kicking game. Yes, he has. He's, been, call, a, he's been a He's been a big factor in their special teams play all season long. He's actually... Had a block punt earlier this year. It just gets overlooked and overlooked and overlooked. But that's I mean, the difference between that and letting it roll in the end zone. You're at the 20. Now they've got to go 98 yards with no timeouts in a minute 32. I love this stuff. Now let's watch. You've got to find Donnie Avery. Let him push the defender off and come back at about 15 to 18. Three man rush. There it is. And yeah, they're going to get a first that's down. Ron Harvey. Harvey, that's right. And see, that only took a couple of seconds. Very nicely done by Houston. But here's one thing to keep in mind. TCU on defense, I don't think you're going to see any type of a prevent defense. Will they loosen up a little bit? A little bit. But I don't think that they're going to be the ones going to back way off and let you eat up big chunks without having some pressure. And obviously, he was out of bounds because it's wow. still second down. I thought he had the first I thought down. he had it, too. But obviously, he didn't. And it's second down at the two. in motion. Rush three, drop eight. Drop it down. Dude. Get out of bounds. Dude. Avery. I'm trying to get too much here. Now you get to the, the first down. Three yards doesn't mean much. I understand the first down. Now they've got to hustle. See, this is where Houston has to get up on the line of scrimmage because as soon as the chains are set and the ball is spotted, the clock restarts. Right. 14 to Avery on that one. Ball signaled in play. Two. Three. They just they brought in two extra players on offense and called the play that way. Tom, a nice block in the backfield. Good job. And that time Avery looked like he wanted to dance up the sideline. That was well done there by Donnie Avery. And Avery picks up 13, so that's 27 to him on the last two plays. Still a minute four. Raf Raphael Priest is on Avery now. That's speed on speed. Would not surprise me. If they show this three-man front here, guys, they go. and they start to bring some people. Sure. And play zone behind. Yes, exactly. Just three. Three coming. Taking a long time. Long way. Nicely completed pass, but Castile moved towards the middle of the field instead of trying to spin back outside. Now TikTok. Second down. And TCU rotated defensive linemen to get fresh legs on the field to yep. rush the passer. Yep. Three-man rush again. That was a great job by number 20, the corner, Nick Sanders. Flag is down. We'll wait for the call. And then Mike will tell us what it was that Sanders did so well. Holding. Defense. Ooh, 10 yards him. in the previous spot. The penalty results 
in a first down. What, what did Sanders they do? They might have even called it on Sanders. He was in press coverage with safety help over the top, and they tried to roll to his man, Jerron Harvey. He held him up at the line of scrimmage, I thought, legally, but he may have held him. And Sanders is out of the ball game, guys. So Take number count. nine, Alex Ebolie is in the ball game, and I don't think he's played a play on defense thus far tonight. No, he hasn't. So if you're the Houston coaching staff and you're seeing it, that's where you probably want to try and go with the football. Oh. This is him down here. We got some excitement yet. 34 seconds remain. They're half the field away. Too much time. He was over the line of scrimmage, wasn't he? He's very close. He's fortunate there's no flag on the play. The linesman was sitting right on the line of scrimmage and never reached for the flag. And it looks like Sanders is cramping up on the sidelines. Charles, as you said, you've got a red shirt fresh, freshman in there now. We haven't played the whole I, night. I, I formation him as uh, best I can and try and find him. Here he goes. You see, but what he's doing is they're shifting Priest to wherever uh, Avery is going. Absolutely, but now you go weak side. There's a safety over the top. And they've got Aldridge out there with him. Keenum underneath to Avery. Uh-oh, the new sideline. Good job. To the 33. Got out of bounds, 18 seconds remaining. They're making this interesting. This is fun, isn't it? Still a lot of rushing three dropping eight, though, isn't it? It really is. 97 yards, I guess, and here we go. Raphael Priest went with the deep guy because of the zone. I mean, I just know, just based on Gary Patterson's teams over the years, sitting back is not in his nature. Doesn't matter. The situation is one thing, but boy, I know he likes to get after people. Great Ortiz comes. And look at how calm Keenum was. We said that in the first quarter. His feet aren't dancing around. Everything's fine. I think when you rush three with a guy like this, you give him more space to maneuver, more ability to buy time, and that's what he does best. And Charles, I think we're going to start seeing heating them up a little bit. And you and I have talked about it from way back. I think you stay with what brought you to this dance and what has held the University of Houston to 13 points has been heating them up. I think you have shifted defensive linemen again. Blake's on the field, 97. I believe Ortiz on the other side. Can they generate that type of a pass run? 14 seconds left. Keenum wants Harvey in the end zone. <laughs> Man, double covered there. Looked like Bonner and Roach had it inside, outside. And TCU shifted Mike and went from a three-man rush to a four-man, but Tommy Blake wasn't able to get much of a push upfield. That was actually it was the kid, Ebolye. Ebolye. And he wow. almost didn't get back underneath in time. He's open. He's wow. open. In that's, the NFL, that's wide open. You see, if that ball, he right. the ball is so close to being dropped in there. Eight seconds left. Touchdown and an extra point sent us to overtime <laughs> in the Texas Bowl. Look at this. And guys, it's down here. This is a bolt down on the bottom is a bullying. And that's Avery. Only eight They're seconds. They're not even looking at him. Roach got there and knocked it down. They didn't even look at Avery on a one-on-one -on -one with the freshman that hasn't played all night. They've got one tick left. They were trying to set up the, the, the Big Ben type play with Harvey, number one, the big target at about 6'5". Wow. Nice job by Roach going up to high pointing the football and almost intercepting it, but not tipping it up. Yeah, here's what I know. Good Donnie job. Avery has 81 catches this year. He's your best football player. He had a one-on-one -on -one with a redshirt freshman that hasn't played all night. TCU screaming for a timeout. They were fortunate. Yeah, you saw those three frogs hop onto the lily pad late. <laughs> see, they were trying to make changes with their D line. But when I see Chase Ortiz running off the field in this situation, I know that's a mistake. Right, right. Somebody's, somebody's right. out there that's not supposed to be. And Keenum. With one second left coming over to the Houston fans who are left saying, let me hear you. Hey, both these teams are gassed. I'm amazed that Keenum has got the energy <laughs> to exhort these fans. As much I, as he's run around oh, tonight and man. taking the hits, you obviously just don't remember being that age.
I'm closer than you are, pal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but I remember being that age and having that energy. Woo. Yeah, you're a lot closer, and thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> hey, this has been fun, guys. I mean, not, they started this drive on the three-yard line. Right, that's right. With a minute 32 remaining. And no timeouts. No timeouts. The ball's on the 19-yard line, one tick. And this kid, Case Keenum, he's fun, Charles. And, and now you see how the second yeah, line's right up with the guard. Guarding the, guarding the goal line with Avery working down below. Look at Ortiz. Ortiz. How fitting. Chase Ortiz. The play's alive. The play's alive. And he came punted it. <laughs> <laughs> They'll call square. We're good. Chase Ortiz put the Maraschino cherry on the Sunday. But, but it's funny. The officials are still saying, hey, you know, ball's kind of um, live here or something, right? Uh, okay, we're good. Oh, they gave us a terrific show. The TCU Horned Frogs and the Houston Cougars, and the Cougars, by the way, bless their hearts, have still not won a bowl game since the Garden State Bowl in 1980. When they From beat the Navy. Right-hand side, he ran right past Jeff Aykroyd, took a real deep pass rush, chased him down the far side. Jason Phillips, the middle linebacker, running with it there. He didn't know he could have scored a touchdown. But you called it fitting, Brad? because how about this for Chase Ortiz, his last home game at TCU. Four tackles for loss, two sacks, two forced fumbles, and a fumble recovery in his goodbye game at Eamon Carter Stadium. How about tonight? He finishes it nearly the same way. Down to Kimberly Jones with the winning coach. Thank you, Brad. I am with Gary Patterson. Are you finally able to exhale? Well, you know, it's every time we play Houston, it's like this. Uh, very, They're very exciting on offense, and uh, we just, we're just glad we ended the season like we did with the win. This is a three-game winning streak and move forward till next year. You've talked about resiliency a lot with this group. Did we see a lot of that tonight, especially the second half? Well, yeah, you know, we, you, we lose Joseph Turner. And then defensively, we just hung on. Uh, they have some good offensive players. And, uh, you know, we just scored a couple more points than they did. Coach, it looks like you have a keeper in your redshirt freshman quarterback. Andy Dalton had quite a second half. Boy, he did. You know, I'm excited about him and Marcus Jackson. They've got a lot of years ahead of them. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Kim, thank you. And Jackson, of course, is a guy uh, who frequently played during the year, but this guy just played too well. The big redhead, Andy Dalton, and Kim, back to you. Thank you, MVP Andy Dalton. I know you were excited yesterday. You're in your hometown of Houston. Lots of family here. What does it mean for you guys to win this and for you personally? It's great. You know, it was a great opportunity to play in the Texas Bowl in Houston hometown. You know, I just uh, give it out to those seniors. They're the ones that, that really needed this, and uh, we did it for them. Describe for us those anxious moments as Case Keenan's working his magic at the end there. Yeah, he was doing a great job moving them downfield, and I was just hoping that we could just, just get one big play, and we finally got it at the end, and, uh, you know, it was an exciting game. You were a different quarterback after halftime, Andy, and your team looked a lot different. Give us a hint of what the pep talk was like from Coach Patterson. You know, we didn't want to uh, bring the seniors out with a loss, you know. We did, we did it for them, and, you know, we just fought hard. Congratulations, Andy. Thank you. Thank you. Kim, nice job down there. And so, fellas, we've got TCU winning the Texas Bowl over Houston 20-13. to 13, But, Charles, they gave us a heck of a show. It was a terrific game all the way through. And it was one of those games where it didn't quite live up to what we thought going into it. Not why I say live up, meaning we thought Houston fast break offense, a lot of points, TCU. This, this became a game that even though it wasn't at the pace that Houston wanted, they still had an opportunity to win it. And TCU always has and always will play great defense when Gary Patterson and Dick Bumpus are around. And the thing I'd like to add, Dalton deserves the MVP. I would add a co-MVP to that, and it would be Brian, Brian Bonner. Bonner. Helped on defense, helped on special teams. And once again, the final score from the Texas Bowl, TCU 20 and Houston 13. Be sure to join us again Monday evening as our college football coverage continues with the Insight.com Bowl featuring the Indiana Hoosiers taking on the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Coverage begins at 6 Eastern. And coming up on the NFL Network, stay tuned for total access for all the latest news from around the NFL, including the Patriots' path to perfection as New England gets ready to take on the New York Giants tomorrow night right here on the NFL Network. Our pregame coverage begins at 2 o'clock. Once again, the final score from the Texas Bowl in Houston, TCU 20, Houston 13. For Mike Mayock, Charles Davis, Kim Jones, and our entire NFL Network team, 
I'm Brad Sham. So long, everybody from Houston. Total Access is next. the destination on the path to perfection. Can the Patriots complete this historic run? Reports from the Meadowlands coming up. And will go bowling, a future NFL quarterback on display in the Champ Sports Bowl. And highlights of the Texas Bowl. And it's getting wild in the regular season finales. Titans, Browns, Redskins, and Vikings in a fight to the finish. NFL Total Access next. Takes the handoff, finds it open, and drives forward. He's in. Touchdown! Countdown to the Patriots and Giants alongside Jamie Dukes and Rod Woodson. I'm Darren Horton. We're going to have all the highlights of the big bowl games tonight coming up on this edition of NFL Total Access. We will get you set for Saturday's Patriots-Giants game as New England continues their path to perfection. Plus, the playoffs begin now for the Redskins and Titans as they try to get to Wild Card Weekend. Do they have what it takes to make it to the postseason? And it's the Houston Cougars and the TCU Horn Frogs of the Battle of the Lone Star State. It went down to the wire. We're going to have highlights of that game and some of the other bowl games later on tonight. But first, it's time to get you set for this weekend's big game. Patriots head down the path to perfection. Brought to you by Gillette. The team departed from Gillette Stadium Friday afternoon on their way to New Jersey, where they